What's up, Stokers? We have an epic, epic podcast for you. But before we begin, I want to remind you that we are on tour. So we're going to be in St. Louis next. Um, get your tickets at chatandjt.com. We're coming to Florida. We're coming to Portland. We're coming to... We're going, we're going everywhere. I can't even think of all the dates. So, But get your tickets at chatandjt.com. We also are... Oh, check out the Reddit. Uh, Chad goes deep Reddit. Get some discussion going on in there. We're also brought to you by the Legends at Factor. Factor, what up, guys? This near you, this new year, you've got goals, and Factor's here to help you achieve each and every one of them. Save time and have the energy you need to tackle everything on your to-do list with Factor's ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door, guys. I've sampled Factor's; they're delicious, and it helps you stay on track with your calories. What up to Factor? Head to factor75.com/go-deep60 and use code go-deep60 to get 60% off your first box. That's code go deep 60 at factor 75.com slash go deep 60 to get 60% off your first box. We're also brought to you by legends at athletic greens. Guys, I love athletic greens. I drink athletic greens every day and I get all my nutrition in one thing. It makes all my health stuff so easy. Just one pack of athletic greens and you get in your prebiotics, your probiotics, your everything biotics, your vitamin biotics, any kind of iotic you could think of is in athletic greens and if you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash go deep. That's athleticgreens.com slash go deep. Check it out. I sprained my wrist and they gave me Percocets, which I thought was a huge... Really? Yeah, over correction. I've only ever gotten a tie. Like, I had full surgery, cut my tits off, and they gave me Tylenol 3s. That's it? That was it? Yeah, and I didn't even really need them. I yeah. think the anesthesia was enough to ride me for through the first two days of recovery. And, and then you were fine. good? Yeah. Hell were you, like, woozy, like, out of it? I was really woozy those first two days. I actually yeah. took, a, like, a call from my manager. I thought I felt great. And then, like, midway through the call, I'm like, I must go. <laughs> <laughs> like suddenly and I, I and i was just in and out of sleep and did you have big boobs no actually a nice really proportionate b on my period maybe a c you showed mm. me a picture of you when you were in yeah i look good eh yeah, yeah you, she was yeah, like yeah, a yeah 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 i Jersey pulled shore smoke show yeah oh I yeah pulled, yeah in high school I did where are you from well. um originally from new york and then grew up in montreal oh cool cool yeah what's montreal? The montreal culture like it's great. Montreal's the best. But it, I mean, it's such. Give us a little more. Uh, you know, it, it it literally is. I tell people here, if you're looking for like a cheap, really gorgeous vacation, go to Montreal. I'm happy it's my hometown because bringing pa- people back there is just amazing. It it is Europe when you when you leave America, you know, mm-hmm. and your dollar is like in Mexico. It's like everything's half. You're yeah. eating like a king for nothing. I uh... five star restaurants, just gorgeous. Yeah, I went to boarding school, and the, like that was the spot. Because I went in yeah, Connecticut, because dr- that was like where, where uh, the drinking would, age. Yeah, kids would party there. I never went. Yeah, it's real. Go take your girl on a romantic. Go for a weekend to Montreal. You literally cannot go wrong. They speak French there. Yes, they do. That's beautiful. They're very rude. They're French. Everybody <laughs> smokes. People are hot, and it's there's no friendliness. People are huff. In Canada, and, yeah, but Quebec is. It's French. It is not Can- Quebec is like the goth kid of Canada. <laughs> like it, it, it's not. It's not the you know the. Is it arrogance or is it just? It's everything. It's everything. It's just they're cold. They're small. They're hot. They eat well. Everything's free. The wine is four dollars. It's the best wine you've ever had. Man, I gotta go. Jesus, amazing. Mm-hmm. It's and they're just, small. Do you say they're small? Yeah, everybody's pretty. Like American people are massive. Like fat? Yeah. We're fat. Massive. Yeah, not in LA though. But like when you go to Disneyland, yeah, in LA. that's where you see real America. Yeah, oh, it, yeah. It, nobody is even, if you went to Montreal, you're like, oh, it looks like power. Like everybody, it's just, purport, every, the whole life is like just, it's, it's really nice. No, it's just like, you know, if you get chicken at the restaurant, you get maybe a leg, a little bit of rice, some green, hmm. gorgeous glass of wine. Nobody, it's not crazy. Mm. here it's like stuffing this into that into this and yeah. the more the merrier it's like you know there's not like refills in montreal Whoa. interesting 
you Super know. Size Me isn't. No, thing. they're not. Yeah. They're not doing that. McDonald's is like a fun treat if you go out at night mm. and you're hungry. The girls were like, let's do McDonald's. But it's not fast food culture. Were you able to maintain that kind of when you came to America? Were you I able to maintain like your yeah proportions? Yes, like I live normal. Portion size. Yeah, that is I don't. Right? I don't care for American food. Whenever people, by the way, tell me when you want to record. We're recording. Oh, we've yeah. been recording We're the whole time. Cruising. Okay, I forget what you wanted me to say before, but whenever I'm eating, like. I just, you know, everybody's like, what can we get? Like, I never want to go for a burger. I'm done with American food. Mm. There's so many burger places. How many times can you say this is the best burger? Right. Like, we've, like, it's not that hard to that make a burger. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm just, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, you know, and there's problems with Montreal. Massive. If you want to work, good luck. If you want a job, good luck. Mm. You have to know French you know, and there's not a lot of opportunity. But if you're a kid or you're starting out your life in Montreal, there's no cheaper. My apartment was four thirty five a month, two balconies, gorgeous, alcohol is cheap as hell, transit. It's just a great city. Hell yeah. Yeah. What were, were we saying before? The we were talking that you're the best because I went out with Carmen Christopher oh, and right. you said you introed him to his girlfriend. You bet. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I'm not expecting a bracelet from him, but, I'm, you know, in Orthodox Judaism, if you set people up, you, you're to, it is customary to um, give the matchmaker a diamond bracelet, specifically mm. a um, tennis bracelet, which is the diamonds going all around. Once mm. we're going for it, let's go for it. Why do they call it tennis bracelet? I have no clue. I guess you can play tennis with it, or maybe they're like little balls. It looks like I can't. I would wear it all the time if I got it. And I did set up. Um, I can say. Should I say the name? Yeah, go for it. Adam Aaronsberg. With his wife. Wow, Adam Aaronsberg? Sarah Schuster. No two way. People. Yeah, two people. We don't know. You don't know who they are. I went to school with them. Montreal. I set them up completely blind. But the thing is, is he comes from a family of diamonds. So I'm thinking, and they're both Jewish, I'm getting the biggest. Mm. I'm like, this is the good setup because he can actually provide the gift that you, you not so nothing. nothing. We go to the wedding. All my friends are looking like, when are they going to give you the diamond bracelet? We're all like sitting there like, when's this going to happen? And she's a misery. Really? Yeah. To get her a husband was like a miracle. <laughs> no, it's like a real miracle. Okay, but yeah. he had short man syndrome, so it really evened out. Oh, that's good stuff. Like, it was, like, perfect. What was she offering? The the two of them had to get together and get me a bracelet. As far as I'm concerned, they're sitting on a massive debt to me. Was your Does wedding he... present, like, a you owe me? No, slip? it's like I even gave. I don't even know what I gave, but the, the, they should give it back. Yeah. Is he aware that you're expecting that? or is he? Oh, they're very aware. There's messages. I oh, followed okay. up. All my friends they were know. on it. We were all pretty much thinking the group was going to inherit a diamond bracelet. I was thinking of selling it off. For par- I, w- I had plans, you know, at, uh, I was maybe 22. I had plans for this this bracelet. And his family being in diamonds, you would think. But again, you know, we're seeing everything that's happening with the Jews. And can I be surprised? I can't be. <laughs> what, what's going on with the Jews? <laughs> There's a lot going on. I just finished the Burning Madoff docuseries. It's excellent. Um, I started that. Oh, how good. The whole thing with the Burning Madoff thing is like, yes, it's, and then now we have Sam Bankman Freed, mm. who's another Jewish person, and you know, with the crypto uh, fallout. But they're just getting caught. You think you think the head of Chase is up to something good? You think you think the heads of Merrill Lynch? No, why the Jews? I think that we I think can open an investigation pretty... into any of these people. I'm sure we'd have a scandal. I don't know. I think like Jared Diamond. I think he's an ethical dude. Yeah, these are ethical people at the top of the banking. Or it's Jamie Diamond is his there. Name. We go. I'm just saying. That said, excellent docu series. I need to check it out. Yeah. Do you think is there more pressure? You think on? Uh, I knew some Orthodox Jewish guys who were in sex addicts. Yeah, and it felt like. They were under Are you a, allowed to share that? No. Okay. And they were under a lot of pressure to like really be titans of industry. Oh, we're, oh wow. You know what? I don't know. You know, uh, Orthodox Jews, they're not in a regular education system. So the only jobs really afforded to them is, you know, working sales, selling commodities, things that don't require 
um, a formal education necessarily. So I think that's why a lot of them do end up in kind of commodities selling uh, diamonds. And you like made that. a great point too when we got coffee. You were talking about how like people criticize Jewish people for being in charge of the media. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, we are. And that should be a compliment. Well, here's the whole thing. It's like if you if you start like Hollywood, you know, I, I don't think, you know, uh, when when this land when nothing was really going on industry wise here jews what a lot of people forget is at the turn of the century jewish people were left out um from participating in regular society they were not there were quotas on how many could go to school um i think in places they couldn't be lawyers or doctors or the things you know they were really kept out of a lot um which led them to the businesses that they're in now uh one of them being entertainment which was considered very low level i think it still has a very low level element to it for mm. a lot of people but um it was considered you know being the jester or, or making you know art it, it wasn't and they literally moved there and they became, they moved to, to Hollywood and they be, uh, and they opened studios and started making movies and taking it seriously and making really an industry of it. I think there was a, a, a museum that opened in LA recently, Motion Picture Museum, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And it was a big scandal because they specifically omitted all the Jewish influence of it. Mm. Versus like if you look up the major studios and I don't know what they're called, um, but if you if you look up, MGM and, and you look up all the major studios, they're all like Hungarian Jewish immigrants who fled the Holocaust or, you know, they're all Fox who started by a Jewish guy. Like, and so these were people who didn't have any options and decided and were gravitating towards the arts and, um, and open studios that ended up being successful, that ended up being where the world went. But I, I always argue if you opened a bakery, could you not call it JT's Bakery? No, you should. So, you know, Fox opens Fox Studios. Could he not? You know, it's so Jew so so it, it's a weird thing to say that Jews because we don't we don't look at other industries and say, well, Catholics run the government. You know, have we ever had a Jewish president? Mm. No. And and who runs big tech? Mm. You know, and who runs well and there are Jews in that now, but I'm just saying there's a lot of industries, you know, um that we don't conglomerate who who is them you know we don't yeah, go after catholics and christians to be yeah. interpreted as like a pejorative yeah and the thing with banking and it's unfortunate where it's turned but and i could be wrong on the history of everything i say by the way if you're in the comments and you're going da, 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 this is yes if a fact's wrong here or there i'm not anderson cooper i'm not a journalist okay whenever they go after comedians like sarah silverman said this it's like yeah, she's a clown. Like, she's not on CNN. Like, we're allowed to say whatever the hell we're saying. I don't have to, you know, you and back And we're talking up. a lot. We talk for like two hours. We talk you're going to make lot. mistakes and we you're trying to We talk a be lot, compelling. but this is the general story that but I But don't know. fuck up. Get it right, though. I'm trying to get it right. So I don't know the years, but I, but Jews were still omitted from partaking in, in being part of, you know... Um, economics and yeah, society so like in you general. you booted us. We started our own thing and now you hate that we so run that So all these thing. aristocrats, all these rich people had money and they had gold bars and they had like the before money was really, when money was backed by gold and they basically kept them in vaults and safes and stuff like that. And banking came about because, um, and this is what I think the origin story of modern banking has to do with, but Jewish people who were excluded again from working professionally would go to like a rich person they knew and be like, hey, you got 10, 10 stacks of gold sitting in a vault in a closet. Let me let me split up the gold and sell it for parts and you'll make more, you know, let me invest your gold. Like, let me try and break up a bar and see what we can get from each individual piece. And we became bankers. Um, and that's why a lot of our last name is Bankman and this and that. It's like, it literally was a necessity. We created this job of instead of just hoarding your wealth in the closet, we're gonna invest it, we're gonna make more money for it. Mm. Um, and I think that was um, one of, the, one of the, the beginnings of modern banking. And so, and we hired each other, we hired other Jews because we couldn't get any other jobs. Mm. So same for entertainment. And now these happen to be super successful. For me, it's like whenever you keep a people out of something, watch them take it over. Like we tried to keep black people out of a sport like golf because golf was, you know, this rich white, by the way, Jewish people also um, not allowed to uh, to be part of golf clubs. Um, and but as soon as they got in, when Tiger cracked in, 
he took that shit over. We're going to see the same thing with tennis. We're going to see it with everything. With rock climbing, I believe, next. Mm. When we get, when you try Surfing? and keep a barrier, whether it be financial or societal or cultural, they will break through and they will dominate because that hunger, um, you know, you were just a, people were just bullies at keeping other people out so that they could be the best at it. But actually we haven't seen the best. Mm. Um, it's the same, like when they had that debate with the trans swimmer, did you follow this Yeah, mm -hmm. at Penn? So I forget her name, trans swimmer. Um, she competed in the men's division, uh, Leah Thomas. Leah Thomas. She competed in the men's division. Then she transitioned. She competed in the in the um, in the women's division, and obviously she swept. And people are coming to me like, you know, and I'm like, I'm not getting involved with that trash. That's all a distraction. Okay. Everybody wants to say Leah Thomas wasn't the best person in the pool. You know, the other girls should have won. And I said, did you see any black girls in the pool? Mm. I don't think we have even close. To the best. Don't tell me any of those girls you know, are the white, best. White, white people are actually supposed to be better swimmers because of anatomical. It doesn't reason. stop it with where this. Are, where are belly I buttons? Said, You're not listen, allowed to say this now, but so, David Epstein, who said he wouldn't have written this in his next book, it's wrong. Sorry, I'm not getting into no, this. No, you're right. Uh, I'm what wrong. I was saying, exactly. But I, but look it up. What What I was saying is wrong. that I don't care. I don't think I don't any of the best. You want to tell me these twelve rich girls are the best swimmers in the pool? Why don't you give a girl from the Bronx lessons from the age of two, and then tell me who the best swimmer in the pool is? Mm. Uh, don't get me distracted by these little issues that are meant to divide us from the real thing that it's rich versus poor. Totally, that's what they're arguing about right, right now with affirmative action. They're like, if you look at Harvard. Everyone who goes there is still rich, and everybody yeah. who goes there is primarily related to someone who's already gone to Harvard. Mm -hmm. mm. It's like they're doing affirmative action, but it's only helping the wealthy people. Yeah. Mm. It's yeah. like there's no social. And then when they do spread. the affirmative action the other way, then it's like, well, you only got in because of this. Why do you think, bitch, you got in? Why did they get in? No, but I'm saying, like, let's say no, we I'm do kidding. affirmative action you. and we let more minorities in or marginalized people, and the white people go, well, you only got in because of this. And you think you're King Tot? Who was your father? How did you get it? Right. <laughs> Rob, you, know? you have covered a ton in the first 12 minutes of I this talk podcast. A lot. I talk a that lot. That was a broad anthropological history of like six major I don't know what to say. All false probably. I don't care. Culture. No, I was, I was, I was. I don't know if anyone would be able to dice in. it up. Okay. It was dense, dude. I was so lost for flip. a while. And then you circled it back to the bankers and back. I was like, that's what we're talking about. I, I circle it back. Listen, it's a long clip. You, If you're putting out 17 minute clips on Instagram. Uh, you know, it's they a need to hear it. It's I not sound bitey. They it's need not, to hear it. I'm not a sound bitey individual. <laughs> no, there's too much of that culturally anyway. You're That's not a long form. Podcast. That's why we, I like the podcast. You're a long form. I love long podcast. Form. Yeah. Long form artist. It's long form. I enjoy that. And you're a crusher. You're one of the funniest stand ups I've seen. Thank you. You always Thank bring you. it. Thank you. My brother saw you at Jam in the Van. He was like, Who was that? She lit the room on fire. Uh, yeah, I'm just so sick of it. I get up there. I'm done. I say what I need to say and I get the <laughs> fuck out. Right. I am Can't already done you. when I get up there. Like, you know what I mean? I'm just like, <laughs> shut up. I, if I hear a peep, most people won't be, but I'm like, and then I will take you for 15 minutes. I will blow your head off and leave. Where'd you get that combative nature from? <laughs> well, yeah, I'm born. I'm one of 10 siblings. Whoa. Ten? Which yeah, one? I have nine siblings. I'm one of 10. I'm seventh. I have six wow. older, three younger. All from the same mama? All from the same mother, enormous vagina. And, uh, um, you ever lay eyes on it? Have I seen her vagina? I have because at the pool, she would take us to the pool for girl swim and she would change. You know, how, like old ladies, like they just they don't have any, they don't give a fuck anymore. And I'd be like, ah, my her pubic hair out to here. Like she would go out with a bathing suit that had pubic hair. I'd be like, ma, like, oh, she had Bush to coming out. She had Bush coming out. She, this what woman a didn't give a lady. fuck. Yeah. That's kind of hot. Yeah. She didn't give a fuck. She had that weird bathing cap on, like, what, right. the thing. Oh, that's like, so hot. Was that normal back in the day? Just have no, Bush pop out? No, it wasn't normal. Super normal. Yeah. It wasn't normal. I would be so embarrassed. Her tits are down here because we all sucked them out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just, and by the way, this is getting Freudian and weird, but. I'm dating a girl with big tits for the you first time. You showed her to me. She's so yeah, hot. It's, yeah, I know. It's She's the first smoked. time I investigated big. I've never been with big. Typically, the girls are much smaller in terms of breast size. And I got to say, I'm sleeping like a baby. <laughs> I got to say. Sleeping on them or just, just on having them, them in, in your them. life? 
I'm holding the belly. I'm getting eight, nine hours. And That's she treated great. you like a king. Like you came home she's from a unreal. trip and she's, she made you a soup she always, or something She like makes that? all kinds of things. Yeah. She made us duck. She's, there's always fresh flowers. She's trimming things. Did you have sleeping problems before? No, and I always slept well, but I'm sleeping heavenly. On those pillows. I feel like, yeah, maybe that could be like a cure for insomnia for a lot yeah, of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet you a lot of guys would like that. Yeah. yeah. If that's what the doctor recommended. If he prescribed yeah. it. Yeah, go to no, the pharmacy. It, it, it's very, yeah, it's very nurturing. It's mm -hmm. a natural nurturing place to be. And you want to be nurtured when you're going to sleep. I feel totally. like it's a good... Cradling. That's one of the best parts Fine. of having a partner is just having them hold you. Yeah, it's excellent. It's excellent. Which actually brings us to the big debate. And one oh, of the reasons the we debate? brought you on here. We talked about Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking about how important it is to be nurtured and touched by your partner. Yeah. Which I think is really well represented in the film Moonlight. Which won oh, best okay. Picture I like This is a good segue. He's you working like on that? his segue again. <laughs> <laughs> He's working on his segue. And then, <laughs> all right. But you actually believe La La Land, which was the confused winner at the Oscars. Right. They brought them up first, and then they were like, no, actually, it's Moonlight. It was a whole to-do, biggest fuck-up in Oscar history. You actually think La La Land should have won that year. I saw La La Land three times in theaters. So I am the minority. I think most, like, I, it, it's, it's a very lucky choice for me because I do like some musicals. A lot I don't, but some I do. This was like very much at the limit of what could be musical. I thought the opening scene alone of of, of that car scene, I don't know if they shut down the 101 or what it was. I thought it was phenomenal. I also, it was it was a um, intersection of such, so many things I love. So it had old cars. I love old cars. I love mm -hmm. old things in general. I liked his apartment. I liked the clickety nature of the car. Moonlight also had old cars. So Very cool cars that. with big yes. rims. Yes, mm -hmm. I, will, I will say that. I will say that. Um, but La La Land, I just really enjoyed. I did. The more I watched it, the more I loved it. Then, Moonlight, I also liked. I thought it infantilized us by giving us the three sections and labeling them. Yeah, the structure's I a little I felt like we were able, as a grown-up, to watch So we're going in attack mode. We're going to take each other's movies down? No, I just felt like like Moonlight was more like vignettes. Right. Like but it wasn't one complete story. So that was the whole thing. I hated when they would tell us the year as if we couldn't tell from the difference of the cars and everything else. And I also hated that they did not know their characters. What I mean by that is the boy in the first scene when they were young was not the same waiter in that last scene because the boy in the first scene when they were in high school and he had a ton of swag, I don't care if you're down on your luck or whatever happens to you, you don't lose, you don't change everything about who you are. They didn't leave him with any swag. There was no any, connective There was no connective the, about who that person, that, that person was and that person was. And I agree with you on the vignettes. But here's where I so disagree. That, that was my Why do we go to the movies? We go to feel, right? We go to feel some. We go to have a part of humanity illuminated that we haven't seen yet or we haven't felt permission to feel. Moonlight did that, where it's really about these people who are afraid to be themselves because they live sure. in a hard world and they're all craving just to be their soft selves, but they can't do but it. But they were the a different person. Accept. So I'm going, I wanted him to be himself. And then you gave me, he like is not even alive. Well, you want me to go in on La La Land? Go in on La La Because they can't Land. sing. They can't Fine. dance. Who it's cares? a fucking musical. Sorry, I came in too harsh there. Okay. I don't remember a single song from it. If I see no, a musical, no song. I got to be singing the tunes when There's I come no out. There's no song. But Hairspray, I like the story. Hairspray, I'm singing all those songs I on my like way I like the out. story. But the, but the story, the stakes are so low. It was low. It was a pleasant movie, but I thought it did what a, it was a movie. It was a cohesive movie. It didn't movie. have the aching heart The other that thing Moonlight was a miniseries. It was a three-part series. Can I tell you something else about Moonlight? It's really a movie. And I love Moonlight still. I just thought La La Land could have won. Moonlight, Moonlight, I think all movies about repressed male homosexuality are actually for straight guys. Because I feel like yeah, all are, straight guys feel like gay. we're hiding something and we're afraid to yeah, be our true vulnerable gay. selves. And who has who has higher stakes in what they feel like they have to hide than a gay I think man in traditional guys, society? I think straight guys have a dilemma. Like, like, do you guys all have dicks? Yeah. Okay, so do you like your dick? Fuck yeah. You caress it, you take care of it? Oh, yeah. Right? So Keep safe to say you, you love your dick? I do. Mm -hmm. Safe to say you love dick? Yeah. Mm. Okay. I think you that men, so safe something? to say you're gay. I think all men have this weird thing where they know that they love their dick, but they mm. don't know what that means. So they have a I, little bit of gay. They don't acknowledge it, even though it's fine. It's your own dick. It's still gay. 
you love it. It's still gay. It is what it is. To love my own well, dick? Yeah. I, well, if that's gay, I don't want to be straight. Well, well, I would not. say I love it for its function, not its aesthetic. Well, you don't you like, like its dick aesthetic. Looks? I mean, it's... You do. I don't believe you. Dude, I think you, got you me love there. it. I love the way your dick looks. <laughs> Thanks. I love okay, the way okay. your dick looks. Yeah. I think you probably have a very nice dick, and it's okay to own that. He's it's very a little, straight. It's on a little the bigger than I would like. Yeah. It's yeah. A I wish it was bigger than you would like because. We had a small dong march. We're champions of the I small dong those, movement. I learned that it was bigger than I anticipated. We help oh, guys small. with small dongs not feel bad about it. Cause no, listen, I agree. You it's know. half the pop. No, men with small it's penises. It's like 90% of the population actually has small dicks. Yeah, men Especially who are crying about... Especially with going around. With what? Phthalates. Have you heard about this? Dicks are getting smaller. Microplastics are making dicks smaller. Microplastics. You know, you drink water bottles and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah. It's, it's uh, raising estrogen and shrinking dongs. The thing with these micro guy, micro penis guys is they're always complaining, you know, I, I, they want a lot of sympathy. They have a micro penis and we should remove the stigma and this and that. But it's like, like I've always said, I have no penis and I fuck like hell. Mm. So who cares? Just utilize whatever the fuck. It's like, it doesn't even really matter. Right. And yeah. Pulling, you don't have okay. a crisis of it because you've never felt like in deficit. On no, I felt like, look what I'm doing without a dick. <laughs> I mean, it's insane. Right. <laughs> I got nothing to offer. It is pretty impressive. <laughs> We're talking about a couple of fingers. I mean, what are we even talking about? You should here? give like a pep talk to these yeah, guys. Yeah, I'm just like, guys, like, it's so, uh, look what I'm pulling. And it's not, you know what I mean? No, it, you it, pull it, smokes. It, I'm it's very crazy. impressed. Yeah. So, and I'm doing, I got nothing doing. I got what? A quarter of an inch? What are we talking about? Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you think, do you think, do you think you're better with your fingers than like me or Chad are? Way better probably yeah 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 i used to i used to help my friend ryan abrams he's kind of useless and helpless but i did give him a full diagram of going down and fingering and i'll sign that. up for that course yeah I'm it's not really really helpful did it change really, his life really, yeah is it, it really too, is it too like crude if we get into it now and we just do the course like in real time here yeah we can do a little bit of now i would say that i would say that <laughs> hand jobs are going to be your best friend more i would say that focusing so okay I don't know if we're on. Okay, so this yeah, is no, the no, vagina. No, no. Mm -hmm. This is the clit here. Mm -hmm. Okay. I would say focus on the upper left portion of it and just softly. Whoa, uh, stage left or my left? The if you're looking left, at it, the person. The stage left. left. So okay. if you're looking at it on the right. Yes, you're right. Why the left? It's a most sensitive towards that area. Interesting. Towards Whoa. the upper. This right. is huge. This is gang, but I think to the upper left. Sorry, I'm sorry, but this right. is probably going to be the clip. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. No. No. So upper. Uh, no. And I think a lot of people talk about this. Um, there was even a sex cult that was like teaching people how to make people come like this. But when you're fingering, I think you're thinking that like, oh, go to the bottom of the clit, go like, you know, where. But I think if you almost towards the upper left and you're more gentle, and obviously, listen, it's different for different people. But I think that'll really bring them close. And I would say to go fast and then slow. Do you have any concerns fast of giving away your slow. secrets or going to give away your Zero. competitive advantage? Zero. Come. Come. That's so generous. Come, everybody. Yeah. Yeah, that's so and nice And then I you. think if you're wanting to fist a girl, which a lot of people don't know how to make a girl squirt or if they're into that, not every girl can squirt, but your best chance is, okay, you got to really wet doing the clit softly i always i i i jerk a girl off with my left hand because it's less aggressive than my right mm. so i'm a righty more tender so yeah your left is a little foreign to you or whatever your non-dominant hand jake you're learning a lot i'm telling you <laughs> yeah, right now holy shit okay you're gonna send me <laughs> i've never heard him bracelet. take this many notes during a pod. okay so <laughs> you guys can have i think i think get her there okay and either she comes from that and then you can go inside of her and you'll know, just make sure it's really wet. And when you're going inside of her or just when she's about to come, you can also do it. You'll feel the vagina open up. So it's quite easy to either get your fist in or, you know, if your penis is I've never is really been that big. interested in putting the fist but, in there. But, here, but she might be interested in really? the, squirting and coming hard. I want to make them squirt. Okay. They get nervous about it. No, the fist, they they, but proper. if they're nervous, they won't be able to do it. The fist leads to squirt? Lots of times. Well, how so you, you go make them in, not nervous? Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. So, go. so you go in and you'll feel it open and you can really, it starts to get really roomy in there. It's right. like, real, oh. I mean, think about it. It holds a, a baby. The world well, opens up. So it's up. not getting that, but it starts to get open. It's not that. And then you just, and sometimes they can squirt from that. Really? And it's still not a sure bet, but is, they'll feel good no matter what. Is that from the pressure? Because there's like so it's, much They're so hand? open. And now so like, oh. it's just, it's, it's, it just, the body has totally relaxed. I so, feel like. so, by, and again, because, I don't have a scientific. This is my own 
This is pure. Experience. This is this is anecdotal. You in the trenches. This, I, yeah, I've been I've been investigating data. and doing this right. research. And you care personally for some time. I care too. Yeah, we care. So to fist because to get the fist in, they have to be relaxed. That's yeah, what you're gotta saying. be relaxed. Makes okay, sense. and you're getting it in like this. You're starting three fingers, four fingers. Right. Yeah. You don't you fingers. don't just like try and punch but it. But then in. no, and then it, you'll see like oh my god, it's like really open in there, and you can feel yeah. almost ridges. Mm. Those ridges, I believe, are a G spot. Oh, nice. I've I've always yeah I've. I've we, I've noticed times when it feels open, but that's always because yeah. I think there's a queef in there. No, oh. but a queef, I believe, is letting the air, air go. Air right, pressure. right. So that's what I'm saying is like, you, you, is like where you're like, wow, this is really open. And then you pull out, queef. It's yeah, because, because there's air the in air. there. And it's because she's contracting around your dick. Mm. Like a suction cup. Is. No, because her muscles are feeling good. I'm it's like, that part out so that's what's wrong. going <laughs> <laughs> You're just making girls nervous the whole time. Why is she nervous the I whole guess time? I guess because I'm anxious. I don't know. Oh I find myself, God, I think I'm a lover yeah. archetype. Like, I'm very yeah. passionate. And you're like, she's nervous. I'm like, she's not nervous. Talk to her. Don't make her nervous. That I can't help you with. No, you I'm pretty to, good at fucking. You know, I, well, you just not won't to be reveal, but, but I, like, I know that for a fact. Thank you. I know. You know, thrilled for you. How do you know? He told me. How do you tell? I didn't say that. All right, so back to La La Land and Moonlight. <laughs> Dude, you know what bothered me about Moonlight? I heard Brady Easton yeah. make this criticism, gay man. He said it. Was, he was the first one who kind of let me in on that it was more of a straight movie, is that they don't really bone in it. And in a lot of gay movies that are made by straight men, it's more about like the desire and like the repression, and it's never about the sex. You know what I mean? And he I was, don't like, know. Put that's some that's that's his perspective, and sure, yeah, definitely. Well, who was in the movie? Was Mahershala Ali? In he's that incredible, movie? but he's only in the first act, and then he just yes, goes he away. was, and he was the father or something. He was the surrogate father. He was incredible, Dude, just and I wish stands. he was the gay man. He's gorgeous. The he's way he incredible. stands there and smokes a cigarette, you're like, they give him an Oscar he's for one like of the ten greatest. minutes of screen time. Oh, did he win the Oscar? I think he won Best Supporting Actor for that. Good. I really like him. I mm. really like him. Yeah, I wish that first vignette was the whole movie. Yeah, that was the best uh, you know one. What? They get I, I, wish, I wish that was the whole movie because then we have to do a new movie with new casting that made no sense to me. Um, I could understand the other little kid having a glow up and becoming this big, beefy, bulky, hot guy. Fine. But they lost the swag. Of the of cool Kevin. kid. Kevin loses the swag and he becomes kind of an ordinary podunk dude. And you're like, this isn't the good looking yeah. and, like, and it, it top just, of the class killer dude. It just, yeah, it didn't seem like it made any sense. But, but what about in La La Land, the fact that Gosling and Emma Stone can't really sing, can't really dance and the songs aren't that good. I'm fine with that. And then in the end, I somehow I'm fine with that. They mm. break up because neither one of them wants to give up on their career. I didn't quite buy it. I was like, y'all could have stayed together. They could have stayed together. I totally agree. I think they should have stayed together. Like there wasn't cheating. There wasn't like, you know, it made no uh, sense. There wasn't like, they were clearly conflict. in love. They None were of the traditional reasons people split. They were clearly in love. And why'd she end up with Tom Everett Scott? I don't know who that is, but, but they were clearly Shades in love. From Wait, was La La Land the one where Justin Timberlake is setting suddenly in the band? Cause that was horrendous. What? Justin Timberlake. That's alpha dog. Okay, can you look up, or that doesn't work? John no, Legend. It's not oh, yeah. that movie. John Legend's yeah. in the band. No, no, no. Okay, John Legend, that was fine. But then Justin Timberlake is in some godforsaken movie showing up in the band, and it ruined the whole movie for me. Let's see what movie this is. <laughs> what? I know it's going to be close. I know it's going to be close. Because when Alpha you see Dog, Justin, Justin Timberlake in something, you just think there's Justin Timberlake. Yeah, but... Well, well, I'm not thinking you're some... What? Was it the Johnny Cash movie? No. Walk the line. Justin Timberlake, IMDb I'm looking, but, credits, okay. acting. No, who yeah. is Elvis and I'm looking Walk it the up. Line? I forget. If I find this faster than you, you have to be fired. Elvis is He's known it. for <laughs> Trolls, The Social Network, In Time. Yeah, that's inside right. Lewin Justin. Davis. Oh, Inside Lewin Tim. Davis? Is that what yes. you're thinking of? Inside, yeah, yes. good call, dude. Okay, so what is it called? 500 Lewin Davis. Miles. Lewin 500 Davis. miles. 500 miles. Inside, Lu yes. He's this. good in that as the cornball dude who's dating Carrie Mulligan while she's getting stripped on the side oh, by yeah. Oscar Isaac. Like, Justin, that movie. Let me see. It's a beautiful movie. Another movie with an aching heart. I think that's one of the Coen Brothers' best films. I have to pee. Go. <laughs> Do you want us to stop or keep going? No, keep going. I'll keep going. I want to talk about when you get back about how you want to like be ostentatious with uh, your... like oh. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to talk in two seconds. You think you're gonna be able to make a girl squirt with that technique? 
Uh, I'm certainly going to try. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to edit this one on slow-mo. Just go <laughs> straight to fisting. Yeah, yeah. Honey, I'm going to come home tonight wake my girlfriend up. I'm, Babe, how you feeling? You want to try something? I'm glad she told us to go like this because I was I was going to go like, you know. You were going to come in and you want to yeah. start boxing too. Right. So it's on your I just mind, go straight dude. for the jab. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're just jabbing it. I'm just like. Are you relaxed yet? I'm just firing, you know, nonstop. I don't think that's a good question. I'm on the heavy are bag you relaxed? practicing. Yeah. Yeah. Babe, are you relaxed? Are you relaxed? Babe, you're tense. I can tell you're tense. Relax. Just a routine fisting. Are you relaxed? <laughs> <laughs> Love you. Dude, we should, we, we, I mean, we'll come back to it, but I mean, it's got to be one of your babes or legends of the week, right? What? The pup? Oh, yeah. She's so cute. You uh, had yeah. a busy ass day, too, bro. I can't believe you're potting right now. Yeah, Iron yeah. Man. We were talking about Inside Lewin Davis. No, I was telling you, though, I think about, have you all watched Surviving Death? No, what's that? What's Netflix docu series? I think it's oh six. people who come back and they talk about what it felt like. Oh, I love that stuff. stuff. It's NDEs. unreal. It's, I love that stuff. Did That's you watch it? Yeah, uh, hell yeah, I watched that. I watched that. I watched like tons of YouTube videos on that. I yeah, and reincarnation. Yeah, what do you think of like ND like near death experiences? Do you think they're valid? Do you think it's legit? Or yeah, do you there's think it's nothing just the I don't believe. Basically, I love. That. I believe. The fact that we're even here on the planet. It's crazy. That I'm not plugged into a wall, that I'm eating whatever and I'm moving without batteries. Yeah. Is a miracle. So that there would be something Beautiful outside of this world. Yeah. I <laughs> so it's like, there's nothing I don't believe. Yeah. Yo, um, that's what David Eagleman says. He's a possibly and he believes everything oh, really? is yeah, possible. Yeah, I believe yeah. everything is, yes. I didn't even know there was a word for it. But yeah, so there's nothing I don't believe. I, I like that the, this was for the first time, you know, a clinical look and maybe not for the first time but at least in a netflix series a clinical look into these experiences because i think science demands us when there's enough examples of something even if anecdotal even if somebody you know memories or whatever we aggregate it we look into it we have a scientific approach for it we see if there's any validity we see if there's mm -hmm. pattern we see so the to dismiss so many examples yeah of kids and reincarnation and stuff like that is just anti-science and i think we have a process to interpret these stories to accumulate them aggregate them and data mine them uh for scientific research so that's what this series does but the big takeaway for the series and i had kind of a different takeaway i think this is what you were getting at but the big takeaway is obviously that there's something larger than us whatever you know whatever whether you believe in these things or not there's we're part of something bigger than us you know and ultimately the material world is limited and we may go on to something we may be part of something bigger we don't know but um you know so so to really focus on what's important in life which is your connections relationships um being good and feeling good and and love and all that stuff but my big takeaway was through all of these episodes the, the one common denominator was that the material world ceases to exist mm. whatever we know it, the only thing we knew is that this ends and we don't know anything else yeah. really so I'm like, the only thing we know is the material world ends. So let me have the material while I can. Right. Like if I can see my grandfather, my Zadie into infinity, potentially, if there's even a chance to see him again, okay, I'll get to him later, but I can only drive a Porsche for so long. Right. <laughs> I can only have the watch I want for so long. Those let are me, the and I like things. Of this yeah. ephemeral life. I like things. That's why I like old cars. I like tactile, clickety things. I like touching things i enjoy things and growing up without things and now having a chance to maybe have things that i love i just i almost have like a rapper mentality i love it like you getting, want to be g'd up from the feet up like what <laughs> like me as a billion you're gonna be like right like i would be lambo bottles models like i'm like literally like and i'm like you know people like the queer community i'm like fuck all that let's get these lambos let's yeah. get going like so you, you think know. gandhi like when he went to wherever you go they're like dude you did it totally wrong yeah you were in yeah. the material world yeah minimalism is not the way no you're in the material world so let me enjoy it i can't beat the system <laughs> yeah let me get whatever the hell right. i can and get out of here you know so that's Especially why it's a like, system like this because it incorporates everything into the system critiques of the system become something that you can sell within it so instead of selling something that's hypocritical why don't you just buy in and live it as it's right and be? there's there's a bad way to buy in like i don't i like i still i love the whole i like process of everything like the reason i wanted like 
first of all, whenever I close a deal, I think I'm selling this or I get a big opportunity or something. The way my, my, my depression mentality works, I mean depression economically speaking, I'm doing fine folks, um, is that I like can't, like I, so, so almost as a therapy for me, exposure therapy, I force myself to spend a chunk of it, you know, for the most part, I'm not looking at it, but I buy myself something nice. Yeah, because so you I don't want to have a famine watch. mentality. You want to believe that more will come in time. Yeah, but also like to take a thing and buy something nice, something handmade, something that has a history to it. I love all that. I love that, you know, engineers and people who are passionate about watchmaking make this handmade So you're not thing. tacky in your taste. You're a connoisseur. Yeah, I like, well, I I, I could also veer tacky. It I really should, depends I what it is. Fun. Yeah, I veer yeah. tacky, but. Like white limousines. I love a white limousine. That's right. a classic. Hmm. We got to bring back the limousine in general. <laughs> what happened to them? They were I'm the best. seeing no limousines. Uh, that's, uh, that's interesting. I haven't seen any either. No. Mm -hmm. You know what? It was SUV. Everyone just oh, does like the Escalade. Right. Everyone's now. So, right. Yeah. so the Escalade but I'm like, what are you, um, like, limousine. I hate it. Like, I hate. I hate nah. the, the limousine. We got to go back to the Cadillac uh, and the Buick and, and the Lincoln. Did the president used to be in a limo? Yeah. Whoa. I mean, they used to do the drop top. Well, they still JFK have the they headshot. still have the limo for the president because do I they? think in comedians getting cars uh, coffee, they did the limousine one oh. with Trump. That was a good episode. <laughs> yeah, with Obama. It's a Cadillac limo though. Here, I'll show you guys. A oh, picture. it's a Cadillac, Cadillac limo. limo. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, what do you president. think about Pope Francis, the head of the Catholic Church? He's he's saying we need to go back towards like modesty. What did he say? Well, he just lives like a stripped down life compared to the rest of the popes. Like they were living ostentatiously. And he's, well, yeah, the, that's a whole scam. They're just they're just you know human trafficking boys over there. Yeah, Father right? Pat, bro, my junior high. Like that's what they're doing. Like they have so many scandals. Like who? But any? But again, it's like okay, with Jewish people running, it's like. Well, you What's know why they had to do that here? too? They, there's 30,000 priests now, and in 1990 there were 60,000. So I think when all that terrible stuff was going on, they didn't have any replacement people to fill mm -hmm. in those jobs. So they just moved them all around. I'll be a priest. I'll you fucking would? go in there and whip them up. Yeah, yeah. I think if I wasn't a stand up com a comedian and a writer, I probably would want to be like You'd the rabbi of the higher power. first ever mega synagogue. Oh, you'd be, a, dude, are you writing that? That would be really good. I'd no, watch I that on do. TV. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that sounds good. I got killer. one congregant already. <laughs> Let's fucking go, Look dude. at that. I'm throwing a lunch Make in. it real, though. Don't make it fake. Like, no, it I, I, I have some shit to say. I have some <laughs> sermons to deliver. <laughs> 10 a.m., you'll be at Shul. And you're going to be so doing God, prosperity so kind of religion where you're going to be like, you deserve to be rich. You deserve to have No, some Lambo. people don't. And I'll tell people who don't. Who's that? Who doesn't? Deserve? I don't know. It's going to be a case by case basis. It's going to be some shitty people. I'm sure coming. You get a what Lambo. You... you don't get a Lambo. Like yeah. what? What? What kind of people? When you meet them, how will you know? It's It's really going to be a game day decision. Yeah. Do you think me and me and Seabone? <sighs> no, you're just idiots. Like I wouldn't even. <laughs> there's nothing really to do. You know, you do have you think to we have idiots Ford in the town. Do Broncos though? <laughs> no, I don't. Don't, don't you think idiots should I don't. have but stuff? But I think it's fun I mean, for idiots to thing. have things. So yeah, it's like, yeah. I kind of don't care. Right. You that know? was really sweet of you. I appreciate yeah. that. You yeah. see us. You yeah. really see yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. You're just uh, 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 morons, uh, you know. And I am happy <laughs> for you. you, but I'm so worried, you know, at the same time. Yeah, news. but yeah. I like when people feel that way about me. Mm -hmm. I want people to be a little concerned about me because it means they're thinking about me. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? I always surprise them with how well I do because I'm a max effort player. So I understand why you're concerned, but mm -hmm. trust me. You should be scared. I like it when people are a little scared, but then I always do Like, better. I think you guys are just super lucky and that's fine. You're the type to be lucky too because you're idiots and you kind of fall into things. That's true. You're born yeah. rich. You kind of you have good hearts. You fall into things. You're not afraid. And you just... you. Well, you, you I think I No, but I, I do characters. feel like you no, though me. appreciate... <laughs> I feel like you right away know where you come from. You're like, it's the best. It's so fun. Like when you just, and I love that attitude. Like that's why when people who are like come from a lot and they're like, no, you know, I feel that. It's like, no, I actually got really lucky and I'm, it, it is the best. That, that's what my yeah. dad always said. It's very he's true. A, he's like, you're just going to win the lottery. I'm like, I know. Yeah. And it's kind of it's like, crazy. you're just like, it's, and the least you can do is gold. carry it lightly and not like be like burdened by it yeah, in some like kind of way that it's. No, it's good. It's like you're not hiding, you're whatever, and you know you got lucky, and you look like lucky idiots, and that's what you are. And every community needs them. How many times are you going to say that? No, because that's what it is. I'm still assessing in real time. That's sweet. I lucky like idiots, assessment. the name of this episode. Lucky that idiots. That should be the name of everything. Dude, if yeah. we do a production yeah. company, Lucky Idiots. Yeah. <laughs> lucky morons. Yeah. <laughs> it's really sweet.
Now, are you wearing no socks or no show socks? No this show is socks. Huge. That's a big part That's of the That's the gayest thing I've ever heard with the no show socks on a man. Hey, you know what? I'll take it. He has pretty <laughs> elite fashion sense, and now he's bumping it up. He's going more style. But the no-show to... socks, you can't take your your shoes off. Here's the thing. My, I want to have these. I want people to think, did he... I want people to question, did I just come from the beach? Mm-hmm. You do, do you, look it. Do you think I just came from the beach? No, I think you're really... I think you're stylish. I think you know what you're wearing. I think it works for you. I think you have good ankles. Thanks. For a man. That's what I'm going Adam for. Adam Rippon said that. Okay. Yeah. Former I think Olympian. for a man. But I... I do, I get so cringe. There's something about seeing the man or anyone actually, I don't like them on women. No show socks. If you're in a shoes off house, you have to right. take your shoes off. Oh yeah. Well, I'm not going to. That's gonna, a disaster. I, I, I never wear the no show socks by themselves. Right. Like around the house, you're wearing like just a regular sock. Oh, totally. Okay. Or barefoot, yeah. right? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I was yeah. wearing socks yeah. Typically barefoot. I get cold. I run cold. I could see that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I run cold, so yeah. I, yeah, I have different kinds of socks. I actually had wool socks. On I don't have all to day worry today. about that. Well, I, I just think I've always I've always had beef with socks that go up to here because I, I like what you're doing with the long yeah. socks. I think you got like right there for me. Oh, that's, <laughs> exactly. that's even worse than the no show. Wait, that's even worse what than the no show. Bad? No, that is the worst thing I've ever seen. Well, you know what? I'm proud of it. I think it suits me. No, it doesn't. Because I don't want to look too hip. It doesn't work for me when I look hip. No, so I have but to it look looks like, like you're trying hip. It's even worse. It doesn't look like I'm trying hip. It looks like I'm like a dad who like these are has work and then is going to run. But I have, look at these tree trunk legs, dude. No, feel these that. Are, these are a little too feel tight. That. You have no, the tiniest calf. I have small calves, but feel that quad. No, I don't want to feel your quad. All right, sorry, no Mr. pressure. Me too, but no I pressure. do think that these are a little. Oh, but you can touch wide. my calf. That's a normal. If you're gonna go skinny, a little bit looser, like his. I'll go. I'll um, try. Okay. Maybe. He's, he's gonna try. Yeah. Interesting. Where are your pants from? Top Shop. Nice. Where are your pants from? Uh, Urban Outfitter. Good. good Where are yours good. from? Uh, used store. They're old dickies. And you call me Mr. Me Too, but my background's actually checks out pretty clean. No, I know, and I'm happy for you. But again, you got lucky. God knows. <laughs> God knows. You in the wrong place. You know. Apologies go a long way. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, what else, dude? Uh, are you torn right now? You're working on a show, right? Yeah, I am touring too. Yeah, I have. Uh, where am I going? I'm going to Pittsburgh the 11th uh february and then i'll be in ann arbor and are you partying after the Sometimes shows like do you get after it are you mixing it up with the fans <sighs> am i partying i mean me having two course lights is a good party <laughs> do you have to turn down like uh potential romantic partners uh like are they throwing it at I, you? I do occasionally i mostly just ignore it if it's like a dm thing you're saying yeah or in person in person it's a little aggressive I never, I, I know it's like at the, when you go to the nude beach, it's never anyone you wanted naked. Right. It's always like your great uncle Eddie. I'm like, fucking uncle Ed, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. it's just like that. The kind of girls yeah, that come dude. up after the show, they, they got a little zaniness in the eyes. I'm a little nervous. I'm a small individual. Yeah, they tell you a little too much I never have top. enough security, you mm -hmm. know, so. They're like I started listening to your podcast with my dead boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Cool. So it's like. You Glad know? he got you on to it. So, so it's always that, but it's always nice. And don't be, you know, don't be deterred from coming up and saying hi. I don't look very welcoming. So, do you I don't prefer know. to be the pursuer or do you like to be the pursued? I'm, I don't mind both. I'm, I, I've been the pursuer and I've been pursued. Yeah, they're both cool. They're both good. I mean, once we're in the relationship, is, you know, I live a very heteronormative lifestyle, you know, kind of have the boy one. And the girl one. And so together we're one in one. It works again. There's a yin know? and yang balance to it. I do think my relationships work better when I was the pursuer initially. Like yeah. there's, there's a better oh, balance. Yeah, guys there. have to pursue. Right. You can't be gay. You, you got to go after it. You got to be forward. You really box people in on this stuff, I do. Huh? I'm a boxer. That, that's the whole thing. It's like I'm, I'm gay. But the thing is, like I was saying with my relationship, because I have like a boy one, I'm like boyish. And then the girl is like girly we lead a very heteronormal like the only gay thing about me is that i'm gay but other than that i'm not even gay mm. if that makes sense whatever mm -hmm. it means to be so gay. i'm still pretty a... traditional in terms of men should do this thing if yeah, i'm playing the boy i gotta you know i'm opening the doors and you're the provider you're the protector yes in many ways i would love if you know women want to work come work contribute you know i haven't seen it as much but i <laughs> I'm certainly open to that. Um, do you have like a, if you see, what, do you have a go-to like pickup line? No, I don't have pickup lines. I, 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 
If you I, see someone you're interested in, what do you if and you want to pursue them? What do you say? You just pull out well, you know what? I've things. I've been in such long relationships. Surprise, surprise. But um, it's always been through friends and stuff. Like right. it's it's not like oh around across from a room and you know I you don't go to bars and like no 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 I'm yeah. not like a bar hopper or this type of thing. Yeah, Dykes. You know, Dykes always like to complain that we don't have any bars. We don't have any places. Like, bitch, you don't go out. Yeah, you don't spend money. No, you don't make money. Even if you're a lawyer, you're pro bono, you work at the ACLU, you're doing, you're making no money, okay? You went to Harvard and you, you have zero dollars. So these are the dykes I know, okay? You refuse to go out of the way not to make money. Yeah, you know, yeah, well, yeah. I took down a 500 job because I'm going to work with at the social center. What are you doing at the social center? Can we get any money together? Gay guys, they're fucking, they got every place. They got bathhouses. They're spending. We can't keep one bar alive because nobody's going out. We're all doing potlucks and hanging out with our cats. Wow. I, if, lesbians, if I get invited, do not invite me to your pot. Either invite me over for dinner or don't, but fuck your potluck. Mm. I cannot go. I'm not making nothing. I once brought two Cokes to a potluck, <laughs> right? Because they were like, well, we don't have drinks. I said, what can I bring? You know, what are people bringing to the potluck? Little cups? I said, we you don't like the little, no, like, like two, co- co- two like liters. Like two liters? <laughs> two liters? Yeah, I brought two of there's them. something gross about the liters. <laughs> yeah, about so the plastic? Brought... There's just something yeah. big, like, tube, and it makes the noise when you squeeze it. Mm. Just bring the six uh, individual ones. That's a rich kid thing. I'm I know telling you right now. Okay, yeah, it is a so rich I brought, kid thing. So for me, I thought I'm bringing two big cups. We're not wrong about everything. They don't, they don't, want, they don't want, you know, they need drinks. <laughs> then she goes, you brought Cokes? I go, yeah. You said... You said you didn't have drinks. Right. Okay. Now I'll tell you something. By the end of the night, what do you think was gone first? Coke. Coke. Everybody had the fucking Coke. Your disgusting cold pasta salad sat there that nobody wanted to touch. <laughs> disgusting. But everybody, the Coke was a big hit. So if I'm invited to a potluck, you know what I'm bringing. I could picture you music video just drinking out of a liter of cola in your Lambo. And it's like, Ugh. it's a powerful motif. Oh, I ordered a Coca-Cola the other day at a show. I said, you know what? And you say Coca-Cola. I think that's powerful. Yeah, I said, can I get a Coke? And he gives me the can, and it was delicious. And then I left the so pee, good. and the can was gone. And I said, you took my Coke away. <laughs> and they gave me another Coke. I've been ordering Shirley Temples. <laughs> that's really fun. That's good. That's that's like bar mitzvah Gren- shit. Grenadine, I mean, it might be one of the best things. It's that Sprite Pretty and the grenadine, right? It's the cherry. Yeah, cherry. yeah, yeah. Oh, grenadine, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sprite and grenadine. Can I ask you, can I ask you something? It might be, I don't know. A stereotypical like biographical question but how did you uh when did you know you were gay and how did that reconcile mm. with your faith so i i was not somebody who grew up thinking i was gay nothing um it it just happened to me i met a, a girl um in a college class and in college i went to school in montreal where we have you graduate in 11th grade and then you do something called college, which is really a pre-college, and you go to university for three years, not four. So your grade 12, 13 is, is this college, but it's not, it's really a pre-college. So I met her in that. She was very strange. She, she layered, she would tag things. I was a very studious kind of preppy kid trying to use school as my out. I was good at school. Um, I was afforded the luxury. I went to a rich private school for high school on subsidy. Um, provided uh, to me as an opportunity um, within the Jewish community, which I'm still so grateful for. Um, and it made me really compete with kind of rich kids. They were all going to school. So I thought, okay, I'm going to go to school. And I was good at it. So I really stuck to it. And I meet this girl who's like totally, you know, getting high and oh, nice. fucking bad influence. And um, she's tagging buildings. And I remember that we were standing outside a beautiful building in Montreal. I said, you think you're adding anything to this gorgeous, historic Montreal building. It's been here for 500 years. It's so stunning. And you're going to put your tag on? She's like, watch out for cops. I'm like, I'm going to call the cops. <laughs> like, I'm not into any of this. Um, but anyway, she she once was like, what if I kissed you? Oh, we were talking online. Like, four in the morning whatever oh i can feel and, the and she was like she was like what if i kiss you i'm like what are you fucking gay i blocked the leader go to class the next day i don't see i don't speak to her i sit on the other side whatever then i unblock her she's like come on okay yeah. then she tells me she signed up for gym late which i did too i got winter camping it's a whole other story and she got camping regular camping and she said that there's a girl in her tent who's bisexual 
And what if that girl kisses her? What should she do? And I said, I don't fucking know. What are you, fucking gay? Again, block and delete the bitch. Okay? And then at our end of year class party, we had one of these cool McCool teachers who wanted to take the, the, the class for a beer. It's also very Montreal. So we all go to this punk bar, Fufun Electronique, and it's like all like, it was so not my scene. And we go to the bathroom. I go to the bathroom. She followed me into the bathroom and she kisses me in the bathroom. And I immediately go, well, at least go into a stall. So we move into a stall and we're making out like crazy. The first thing I said to her was I was feeling her stomach, my first time feeling a girl or anything. And I said, wow, you have abs. That's what I remember saying that because I a girl with abs, I never even knew what a girl, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, then we were closeted for a very long time. I was not going to come out because I went to a conservative school And even though, like, I didn't really care what my family thought of at that point because I was pretty disconnected from my family. Um, I was at that age where I was like 17. I was living on my own. I was doing everything on my own. Um, I was poor, but I had a good social life and this and that. I had a good thing going with school. So I thought, like, fuck, another thing? Like, I cannot afford to be gay. Like, that makes no sense. I've already born one of 10 to this crazy, deaf, single here, you know, mother. You know, I, I'm working full time, going to school full time. Like I cannot have another. I just need to marry rich and be done with it already. Because I was pulling great guys, all rich kids too. Because that's the school I went to. So I was getting a lot like Prince were you, Charming. Were you, were you boning the hot dudes just to like for like? No, I never to, boned. Like, I chips? never boned them. I, I was but, actually. Or, or like, were you like having them chase you or going wherever you went with it just to be like? Just for the status of it? Yeah. Well, I also liked flirting. I liked the attention. I liked boys, but I didn't want their penis in me. Mm. And and they were more like slaves than a boyfriend. I really only had one. And he would bring me like iced coffees from So it was the Hortons. power of it that you were drawn no, to. No, he was very, but he was you very like wealthy. very st- Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, and I realized I was like not so kind to boy, but, but girls are much mm. kinder to him. I realized, oh, that's what love, you know what I mean? Mm. Mm-hmm. But whenever he wanted to hang out, I thought he was annoying. I'm like, oh, no, I don't want to hang out. I'm going over to her house, you know? Yeah, because yeah. you got guys in a box. If we show any weakness to you, we're dead in the water. Yeah. And I was ugly as hell. Like I went hot again, but I went through periods of being so ugly and having the worst clothing and I couldn't keep up with any of the clothes that kids had but still i was getting guys but my friends were even noticing like you're hideous <laughs> like, like how no, did you get on, him get no they'd be here. like how did he i was like he started messaging me i don't know i might well, have to block want him. your approval yeah so that happened but i was also annoying to a lot of guys i was la- you know it was always but i i somehow got good guys have you have you ever circled back and talked to these fellows? Yes, and like, hey, sorry so for good. You? No, Zach, uh, they've come to shows and stuff. Um, he, re- I mean, really, my high school, the guy I was seeing, I, I don't even know if I ever said boyfriend. Um, such a kind, amazing guy, and he actually married the uh, the most popular girl in our class, and she's hot and so funny, and um, I think they're a great couple. Mm. So yeah, really- she must feel good being second place. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> when did you start stand up? Um, so I started stand up. So just to uh, finish the coming out story. So I was outed viciously. So I never no. was going to come out because I didn't want to be the one gay girl. You know, my, my community, even though it wasn't, it was, it wasn't Orthodox Jewish. It was still very conservative Jewish. And there still wasn't a lot of like open gay, even though it was also the two thousands, like everybody was, but my community. Right. And I was homophobic myself. So it's like, I didn't want to be like, I only knew one gay girl. And whenever she walked into the cafeteria, I'm like, look at that dyke. Like I was one starting. (laughs) Like she's such a dyke, you know? And I just didn't want to be, it's so mean. But obviously, and so I didn't, I was like, I'm not coming. And my girlfriend was like, I remember we were taking the subway home and she was like, hold my hand or I'm on the subway platform or I'm not riding it with you. I'm take another fucking car. I'm not holding your hand. The f- uh, and I'm this is me waving to her getting onto the car <laughs> <laughs> like, literally by I don't give a fuck why and then why, uh, why, why, why? I was not coming I just did not need to be you gay you just didn't want to be seen you weren't ready to be seen yeah I wasn't ready to be gay I, my social life was so important to me um, and then I was at the student bar and we were sharing a picture us and like I don't know how many people and we were getting sloppy and we went up to the bathroom classic and we were making out. And when we caught out of the stall, you could tell that we were like leaving an embrace together. And this bitch, Carrie, she knows her last name, 
she ended up telling everyone. So I had that kind of like, like, uh, what's the Mandy Moore movie? Shane West. Oh, Walk, uh, to, Walk remember. to Remember. Such a good soundtrack. Oh, so good. And you? such a good movie. Two places at once. I'm dead. I know. So, so cute. Bring her to state so lines. cute. So I had kind of that scene of like walking through the cafeteria with everybody knowing I'm gay. Like it traveled and it was awful. It was, it was so bad. And my friends didn't stay friends with me. They were like, we just think it's really weird. Like mm. I lost my best friend who I like had my whole life with, you know, um, she just didn't speak to me for three months. And um, it was really, really painful, I think, at that age to lose your social circle. And then, but I did have friends and I re I wear my friend Allie's bracelet still. She got me when I was 16, who called me and said, hey, I I'm hearing stuff about you. I just want to know you to know that I, that I love you. And I don't know if it's true or not. Either way, I don't care. So those people, amazing. And then my other friends did come around. And in fact, I had a bachelorette party Um two years ago with a bunch of my high school friends and uh i got a, an apology at dinner they said by the way the way we treated you we were 17 and i actually started crying because i was like you know yeah i was so i was a kid and just faced with losing everything you know um but they were also kids uh, we were all like, you know, 17, 18 years old. So, um, so I was outed viciously. My family really didn't care, but again, I wasn't that close to them at the, at that time. And we weren't as religious anymore. We were still Jewish, but, um, everybody was kind of in limbo with their faith. Um, mm. and, and the same for me, I ended up, I'm more religious now. Like I'm, you know, as much as like, I would want to leave the faith or whenever I was like, oh, I'm not, you know. I'm very Jewish, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, whether I'm proud, like I'm, it's woven in. Yeah. I, so, so it is what it is. Um, yeah. And then that's like Scorsese says about being a Catholic. He's like, there, I, there's nothing I can do. There's about a, it. What are you going to do? It's in there. Yeah. It's so just in there. It's the way I am. Yeah. But he feels terrible because he's been married like five times. So he like has this like oh. pain that he'll never be accepted into like. Who's this? Uh, Martin Scorsese. Really? Mm -hmm. He's very religious. Super Catholic. Did I mean, you like him and Fran together? Him and who? Fran. Dresser? No, um, Fran Lebowitz. Yeah. Nah, dude, because like he did the one movie about her public speaking like 15 years ago, and that was enough for me. And then they come out with like another six part mini series. It was unreal. On, it was terrible. One episode. That's all I needed. Oh my God. Everybody liked it, but you, you're anti Semitic. I, I'm done with this podcast. That's crazy. This is severe that, anti Semitic crazy. homophobia. I got picked on is, for being Jewish. Uh, yeah, yeah. Look at my face. No, in Orange County. You know, you're you know not Jewish. Like? No, I'm not. But No, thank God. <laughs> No, but it was too I need to end She's on this anti-Semitism. Why, you see why this? is Leibovitz such Stop. a big deal? Sorry, sorry. I'll, I'll see to your, your station on it. Martin you... Scorsese. I, why is he so obsessed with her? They're friends. They can't be friends. I'm just saying, they can be friends. He doesn't have to make like seven hours of material. Why doesn't he it? have to? Why don't you tell him what to make? Maybe he wants to prank people on the beach. I have a couple things he shouldn't <laughs> okay. have done. Maybe Some of he'll it's go the prank Catholic people stuff. on the beach. Some of it's the cut. Oh, that was a shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't even catch that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you think that's easy, bro? <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe he should do that. Maybe they should have done a prank show. I would love it if Square says he would direct uh, our next that'd prank. That'd be hilarious. Thing. Yeah, that'd I mean, be good. I've been DMing him. He's not getting back to me. So, what do you think happens when we die? Do you think we become we go to a different realm? Do you think we come back? Do you think we have past lives? I think absolutely everything is possible like i can't even tell you like i i think it's it's probably fine but i think um yeah i think it's it's possible that you have uh that there's you know it's as realistic to me that there would be an earth as there would be a heaven i again think this is so insane that this is i mean you know that we're living so I think it's all possible. I have no clue. Um, you know, in Judaism, I think there's this thing that like, there's no hell. And I think it's not so much as there's no hell. And that's why our numbers are very low. I, I, you know, there's not really a threat to, if you don't do this, you're going to hell. We don't have much of that dialogue, but I think that, um, what was I going to say with this? That there's, there's no hell. In heaven. I totally forget my You're my doing John Lennon up. Imagine. No, I, I just, just... You're just doing Lennon. No, I think that it's so possible that there's something else. There's so possible that there's not something else. Um, 
but I think you have kind of a feeling of total peace or something at the end. I think those endorphins yeah. and all that. I think there's a reason to that. I think there's something really probably spiritual. Do you think there's time after you die? Or are you just dead forever? And and it's just continuous. I have no clue. I had the weirdest dream. Oh, I wanted to get to my beef after. Do we still have time We have to that? answer okay. some listeners' questions and, okay. then, and then we got to do okay. that. So we got, we got, um, we got, we got a lot of meat left on the bone. I had the craziest dream about death. Mm. And this and i don't i like i have sometimes some intense dreams this one i really remember so basically i was suddenly in a, i was dead everybody was dead and we were in a huge movie theater basically how heaven worked was everything was a floor okay and you can go to whatever floor you want every floor represented another year i don't know what year and i was on this huge movie theater like the vastest fastest and people were just rotting there watching movie and movie and movie and a guy next to me this old man touched me and i go whoa how old are you and he said 124 hmm. and i was like how long have you been here he's like i died at 21 and i'm like what and he died of some collar thing i forget what he said collar. but some collar some weird freak accident been there from 21 to 24 just watching movies and you can kind of just pick and people are almost waiting it's almost like a secondary waiting room and then they died, like a guy touched me right behind and he was so frail. This guy was even older than that guy that I just like easily took him off and he kind of withered away. And that almost looked like there's another world that's like a secondary world where you actually then go die again. Mm. Um, and apparently there's this Jungian theory and I think I'm saying the name okay, but it's mm -hmm. a guy who really looks into dreams that... Uh, my girlfriend told me that movies, it's interesting that I was on this floor watching movies because movies are a way for people to experience more life than they have. So it's almost like everybody in this room was trying to pack in as many lives as possible mm -hmm. by watching all these movies. Oh, interesting. Because you, when you watch a movie, you get to experience a, a snippet of a life. You don't, like it gives you more. It yeah, gives you the, so I don't know. I forget the heaven that and hell thing. That sounds like a call to action to live now in this moment. Exactly. Oh, yeah. So that's what I want to say with Judaism. That's exactly it. It's not that we don't have hell. It's that our best answer is we don't know about heaven. And hell. We don't know. All we know is that we have this life. So we really put an emphasis on living the best life you can this life. Versus other religions who live for an afterlife or consider, you know, there's a greater. We go, we don't know. That's also possible. We, what we do know is this life. So let's invest everything we can into making this one great. Right. Like that old Yiddish phrase, carpe diem. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, you want to answer some cues? Let's do it. Guys, I'm interrupting this podcast to let you know once again that we are on tour. Get your tickets at chantjt.com. Next tour dates are in St. Louis. Um... The uh, San Clemente Times is calling our show the hottest ticket on earth. And it's hot because we sun our perineums in there. What up? So we're also check out the Reddit. Go to Chad Goes to Reddit. Get some discussion going on with some stokers. You know, talk about whatever. I dive in there sometimes and I say, what up? I love the Reddit, dude. I didn't even know what it was until it started to exist. And I was like, holy sh shit. It's sick. Check it out. We're also brought to you by the Legends at Factor, guys. If you want to stay on top of your meals, if you want to get your nutrition on point, if you want to get your caloric intake on point, and you don't want to waste all this time, like, uh, you know, going to the grocery store and trying to figure it out, like, what do I eat? Or like, what ingredients do I get? Factor takes care of all of that because it's ready to eat meals right for you. You can go keto, you can go vegetarian, you can go eminemarian, whatever, you know, pescatarian, whatever you, you know, it's sick. No matter your lifestyle, Factor has the meals to help you live it to the fullest. Live life to the fullest with keto, calorie smart, vegan, veggie, protein plus, all that stuff. There are four, 34 chef prepared, dietitian approved weekly options. You can get vegan, veggie, all that good stuff. If you get get on Factor, guys, it's legit. Head to factor75.com slash go deep 60 and use code go deep 60 to get 60% off your first box. That's code. Go deep 60 at factor75.com slash go deep 60 to get 60% off your first box. We're also brought to you by the legends of athletic greens. Guys, I love athletic greens. It's the best way to get your nutrition all in one nice drink. And you just put a pack of athletic greens there. One scoop guys, you get your prebiotics, probiotics, all your nutrition, vitamins, minerals, and you feel good. 
I love Athletic Greens. It tastes good. It's reviewed well. You know, I take it. I take it I take it during lunch because that's when I start eating for the day. What up intermittent fasting and it makes me feel amazing. I know it's helping with hair growth, skin, all that stuff. I love athletic greens and it helps your digestion and all that good stuff. If you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you a free 1-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash go deep. That's athleticgreens.com slash go deep. Check it out. All right, back to the show. All right. Um, is it cheating if you J off to a porn star that looks just like your ex? Hey, bros, a couple of weeks ago, I was dabbling into some Nick on Nick time when I came across an amateur porn star who looks just like my ex. For background, the ex and I were on and off for all of college, and it wasn't until I met my now girlfriend that I was finally to get over her. But for whatever reason, it feels like I'm not since I've watched the entire girl's oeuvre and it's still not enough. Is this normal, or do I need to go cold turkey for the sake of my sausage and my mind? Well, you're no. obviously not over your girlfriend. I don't care that she looks like the ex. That's not cheating, but you're, and, and none of this is cheating so far. The problem is you're settling with your current girlfriend because you're not over your last. No. Yeah, you're not over her. Why are you thinking about her so much? No, he's just, I don't think. I think if you saw a bitch that looked like your ex and you, you were over them, you might not want to watch that. He wants to watch it. No, I think with masturbation, it's a totally different realm. I think it's, it's, it's. We look at each other. Not, <laughs> it's not reflective of how he feels about his current partner. I, I don't think that's, I don't think. It's not cheating. The answer is no. No, it's not cheating. And I don't even think it, but but beyond that, I think he really likes this girl. And it sounds like he's taking it serious. No, it doesn't sound like he really likes her. Do, but anyway. Don't, well, you he think, don't you think masturbation, like the fantasy, it's in the fantasy realm. So it's sort of like you're sampling with sort of like the forbidden. And it's sort of like, that's your ex. You can't really go back there. So maybe it's like sure. you're playing with that a little bit. Sure. 100%. The, this guy has absolutely no problems in his life. That he's writing in with this nonsense. <laughs> well, our listeners are not dissimilar to us. But no, the problems feel real Lucky to idiots. Us. Okay, give me another one. <laughs> Dude, I'm I'm like bummed that we didn't come up with lucky idiots on our own. It's a good one. Yeah, <laughs> it's so straight to it, dude. You pay me 88K and it's yours. Um, um, This is way too long. Oh, what are people doing? <laughs> Look, I got my own. It, I'll just. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna jump in at the end. <laughs> um. Look, I got my own issues, but I respect women and eat pussy like a champion. I'm a man. I read 18th century philosophy, take care of myself, treat women right, and eat pussy like a champion. I don't think I should hang out with this guy if he's actually reading this book. I can't with this guy. Next one. <laughs> you should block and delete this email account. He had a buddy that he was maybe going to hang out with who's reading a book called The Rational Man. He searched it on Reddit. You'll see it's really weird incel shit. Oh, so he doesn't know if he should hang out with this dude who's reading incel stuff. Um, so, yeah, do you, think, do you think it's okay for a guy to be friends with someone who's falling down the incel rabbit hole? Yeah, I think you can be friends with anyone. And I also think it's an opportunity to help that guy see the light. Like, you know, if you show him that there's a way to be that I mean, I feel bad for those dudes who feel like they got no shot. That's got to be a sad uh, state of mind to be in. So, and I think most people can make their life what they wanted to, and you could help him see that. So I would, I would, you know, don't give up on him. I mean, if he's a new guy, that's tough because that's a big investment. But if it was like an existing friend and I saw them going, yeah, that way, I have some friends I don't. Uh, you know, well, that's her. She lies. You know, yeah, you can't believe anything she says. It's all like she's fun at a party. Like, what are you gonna do? It's your yeah, friends. Yeah. You know, if he, if he, you know, I just wouldn't bring him around girls. I don't want to know him. I wish I never heard anything <laughs> said in that email. <laughs> he took five minutes of my life. Well, why do you think, do, I mean, this is a big, big, big cue to throw at you, but why do you think so many dudes are falling into this incel, like, state of mind where... Well, now there's just a word for it. They were just losers when I was growing up. <laughs> yeah. so, well, I guess now they, they have found a culture. Each other yeah, like they have a, They've named the community, but they were just losers. All right, last cue. What martial arts should I do? What up, Lords of Stoketown, Chadwick, John Thomas, Uncle Big Hog, Joe, Love Guru, Strider, and any esteemed guests of the pod? That's you. 
New year, new me. Been thinking about picking up a martial art mainly as a way to meet new people and relieve stress, but also because there's been a small uptick in violent crime in my neighborhood. I have a buddy in Phoenix that teaches Muay Thai. Hui, hui, hui. But another crazy friend that swears by BJJ. I was thinking of Krav Maga, but that might be a little too intense for someone who only did Taekwondo back in elementary school. More like take my dough. What would you lords recommend? Nothing. I don't believe in martial arts. <laughs> I, 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 I was talking to you about this, about how I do it. And you were like, that's useless. Like, it's so useless. Because it's not. Money now. It, it's not a way to fight. Like if you can't just. Well, let me get into this position before I can do the move on you. Like. It doesn't, if you're ever in a real situation of a real fight, you're not like, wait, but put your hand there and I'll put my leg but there. Like and then you move BS, your, but like you know, boxing and Muay Thai it's and like BJJ, just, you can, you can. No, it's just because all these men want to do dance, but they're too afraid to be gay to just <laughs> do, do dance. dance. So they do this weird, they call it this, but yeah. you just, just that take ballet and be done with it. Like what, literally. What, what's if I'm that, not getting cuddles, I'll go to jujitsu just to yeah. get held. What's that dance workout class called? Tai Zumba. Ball. Zumba. Yeah. Just do Zumba, Zumba, do ballet. Shut up. Leave us alone already with your tight and your your grabbing each other. I don't care that you're gay. Just don't Brother, just call it what it her. is. Don't do Krav Maga, Muay Thai, and BJJ. They'll give you a lot more real world appli application power. Real world application. If you're gonna do anything, do boxing. That's what I was saying. Don't you just want to learn how to punch? Yeah, yeah but, but but Muay Thai is punching, but you also get elbows, knees, and kicks. No, oh. just yeah. do boxing and shut up. System. Oh, okay. And then if you do left way, it's or Muay Thai with a headbutt. You can use your head. No, Nine then do training. UFC, the one that's all kinds of fighting, just that, your animals. Yeah, that's like Muay Thai and BJJ. Those are part okay, of it. Okay, just do UFC. Watch the Conor McGregor notorious documentary. Is that the best documentary I loved of all it. Time? Oh my god! Has anyone ever manifested their highest potential more than him? He's unbelievable. That girl with him? Mm -hmm, Dev, dude, with him from the start, bro. From the start. When he was a fucking plumber on the on the dole. No, uh, the, uh, listen. Shout out to Conor McGregor. So just watch that. And if you're not even close to that, just quit everything. <laughs> okay, so that's it. Wait, yeah. You do find out pretty quick. I suck, so I found out pretty yeah. quick. Do your glasses not go to your ears? This is broken. Oh. And it's taking six weeks. They're all of her people, so they're ordering me a new arm. Oh, I thought that was like a fashion thing. Of no, it's brutal. <laughs> but the glasses are so light that really the only thing that ever kept my glasses on, I only realized with this, was my nose piece. It's sort of like the Morpheus thing. Yeah. All right, let's push into the next part. Yeah. Chad. Do we have another one of these? Yeah, I'll go grab you one. Okay, great. Chad, who's your beef of the week? Um, mm. my beef of the week, my beef of the week is, uh, paperwork on airplanes. Have you ever been on an airplane oh. and they have mechanical problems and then they fix the mechanical problem, but then you have to wait an extra like two hours cause they can't fill out the paperwork. That's have insane. you dealt with that? No, it's probably an excuse. They're all useless. Yeah. So we were, we were out on the, uh, I was, I had a layover. I was flying from Vegas and they're like, we can't turn the engine on. Oh. And so they mechanics came out they fixed it and i don't even know how Thank long you. and that's the worst part too is when you're just waiting on the runway with no it's brutal. you're like i don't even know what's going on pete buddha judge should be shot dead and i take <laughs> is that he back. responsible yeah, he's well the he's of the head of transport and oh, I, i've never even known a head of transport i've never even thought of transport issues until he got the job yeah it like it he's almost so feels cute, like though. clockwork it, it started with like him getting it and then we had the big like shipping supply chain like these boats in is the middle of the him? atlantic it's all him where they couldn't get the boats in yeah so it's like the fact that i'm even looking at but i'm like why am i i don't i shouldn't even know about this wow then when the airlines decided to hike up all the prices and everything just gouging crazy he did nothing then christmas when they had the storms and like everything that Southwest. happened he just yeah nothing well, he takes a million weeks off for his paternity leave for no. an adoption yeah the country's like in peril the, the airlines don't work so i blame your little paperwork issue you write pete a yeah little well, letter. and then there's just this whole summer flying was horrific mm -hmm. every time i flew Mm -hmm. It was like delayed. It was canceled. Pete it was like Buttigieg. a national crisis, dude. Pete, Pete? I, I had no idea. He was, yeah, he's responsible. Yeah, for this. I never even heard of transport, but now it's all the stories. And he's got we a have. little head. Yeah, he dude, he does have a little head. Yeah, it's like crowns. Like, I'm gonna DM him. He can't stay balanced. It's like, yeah, the fact that he's gay is even not even. I didn't know he was gay, and I was supporting him for prez, and then I found out he was gay. Yeah, and then it's like, no. But here's the whole thing. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? No, here's the whole thing. Yeah, Jake Getter. Here's the whole thing. The only reason that we get a gay... The only reason people are even accepting him is because he's a top. 
my whole theory is you can never have a bottom. The reason women don't win, okay, Hillary arguably is a top, but she was, you know, it's such a mess. Let's say like You're an Elizabeth way over Warren. Your skis on this one. The reason the, the Elizabeth Warren is like she's really good policy and whatever, but she gets fucked. People know that. Okay. That's not what it is. We want presidents to fuck. We don't want them getting fucked. Pete Buttigieg still fucks. So we allow it. We had a gal on last week. I'm and telling she was you, Chastin, Chastin for president would never happen. The bottom, we're not ready so for that. So Thatcher and Markle and the lady in New Zealand, they're all delivering? No, this is an American issue only. Oh, okay. Okay. I buy Americans that. like presidents who fuck. Mm. Right. Period. We, so which dude presidents have we had that didn't fuck? I mean, they all fucked. They all look like they fuck. Yeah. They all look like they, in their own way. Yep. Nixon, I feel like he got pegged. <laughs> right. I mean, he was drinking a lot. Yeah. I mean, George Bush, you would think, didn't get fucked. He but fucked then his, his wife heyday, is even more docile yeah. than him. So he did fuck. Well, he like he repented for his fucking. Yeah. He mm. was post-fuck. Um, dude, my beef of the week, we've been traveling a lot. We were doing stand-up in Spokane. Great town. I had a lot of fun up there. Rachel Dolezal from Spokane. What's your take on Dolezal? I, I can't get is, out. She's from Spokane? Yeah. Give me another documentary. I'll watch them all. <laughs> Do you follow Give her, her OnlyFans? On, on Daily Wire. I'd watch it. Do you follow her OnlyFans? No. Give her a show on Daily Wire? Yeah, she has just, one. You just was she doing some... a good job running that <laughs> chapter of the NAACP? Like, was she an effective leader? No, probably not. She's I, delusional. I, she I probably did do a lot of things for them, but, it, but it's all... She she did worse in the end. It's a lie. She hurt them in the end. Yeah, in the end, it got worse. She should have seen that coming. True, true. Yeah. Dude, so my beef is from an airplane, too. It's minor. I'm going to the bathroom on the flight from Seattle to LA today. There, a guy, I don't even know if he was in the bathroom. He might have just been in the last row. He opens the door to the bathroom for me. He's just holding it. And there's enough space for me to walk by. Like, he could have just moved. He holds the door open, puts his hand on my shoulder, guides me to the bathroom... And then he's like standing in the doorway and then closes the door for me to the bathroom. Wait, what? what? He closed the door? <laughs> he. We're both like, what? <laughs> he held the door open, guided me into the bathroom, and then closed the door for me to the bathroom. Why is that bad? It was just weird. Oh. It was all unnecessary. And I was like, bro, I got it from here. Like I went to grab the handle and he's like. Maybe you looked incompetent. <laughs> no way. I yes, walked with so much confidence on the plane. probably tight little jeans on. You know what? You, Will you feel my quad? No, I'm not. I'm not feeling. <laughs> we have so the exact same. It? We have the exact same ankles. <laughs> okay, my beef for the week. Asses. Yeah, you go. You go. My beef for the week, and this is massive. Was okay. You have. We have to start from the beginning. I live in a complex of four apartments. They're beautiful apartments. It's kind of like a lesbian Melrose place. I know mm. everybody living there. My best friends live on top. I did their wedding this past summer and then there's a friend really their friend who lives next to me also a lesbian my friends upstairs they get a, a couch they uh their friends are uh, an amazing furniture maker and made a beautiful couch couches that typically go for like eight nine thousand dollars i gave it a friend price forty five hundred dollars okay a wool organic couch the couch when everything is set and done it doesn't fit into the office that they needed to go into so they offer it for the living room of my new neighbor who's moving in. So she takes the couch. She gets the couch free. A year goes by. She's finally getting a, a bigger couch, blah, blah, blah. And I say, so she's like, I'm thinking of getting rid of this couch. And I said, well, maybe, you know, my girlfriend or my sister's moving to town. Maybe she'll take it or, you know, whatever. Okay. And she goes, and then later she goes, actually, I think I'm going to bring it to my house in Joshua Tree. So that's perfect. What a good idea. Great. Weeks later, on, I'm talking to her. I'm like, did you ever get the house, uh, the couch up to, to Joshua Tree? I know you were looking. Your, your friend was getting a truck. She said, no, nah, we threw it out. I said, what? She said, we, we threw the, 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 the couch out. We brought it to the dump. I'm like, the dump? Where's even the dump? <laughs> like, that seems so hard to bring it to the dump. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, what? And not even that I even want, like my sister ended up bringing a couch. Like, not even for, but just... Even if you don't want to throw it on Facebook or you don't want to throw it to your Instagram friends, does anybody need a couch? Just put it on the curb. I, I got rid of a couch from my office that just was destroyed by my cat. So it's, I couldn't even really sell it. But I put it on the curb, said, hey, you know, the sides are destroyed by the cat, but it's still functioning sofa. And they took it in two parts. You know, in these times, 
to not put a couch on the curb. Mm. So I was like, I call, I was like, oh my God, you threw it out. It's not even her cat. Like it's obscene. So she, um, she got mad at me and she, I said, you threw it out. Like at not, at least not even donating. She's supposed to be a therapist. Mm. She has no empathy whatsoever. <laughs> Okay, so I I, I, go, I can't even imagine not even, it must be so much easier just to put it outside. Like bringing, I, where is the dump? And she wouldn't answer, she hung up. I said, where's the dump? I, I can't even imagine. And um, yeah, and she's, uh, and, and I wrote her a message after I said, I think you hung up on me because you're embarrassed. Hopefully ashamed. Um, it, it truly caught me off guard that you wouldn't at the very least donate a couch to somebody in need, to the goodwill, to anything, before bringing a, a forty-five hundred dollar couch, basically new, to to the dump. <laughs> so I apologize, you caught me off guard, but I imagine you were very embarrassed. <laughs> and we haven't talked since. <laughs> but I don't think I'm wrong. I mean, I was a, horrified. A forty-five hundred dollar couch. That's. It was a really nice Taking organic little couch. What? Did she have a truck? Yeah, like, her girlfriend you... got a truck and they brought it to the, like they were going to bring it to the house up up north. She didn't. So they did, They were like, oh, the dumps, like just drop it off right there. Bring it yeah. to the Goodwill. Yeah. The right, dump you, to be like, crushed for no reason? Just carry it to the sidewalk. I'm suspicious. I the think same. Something's going on. Something's going on. The fact that she hung up on you rather than get pressed means like i think she's hiding something yeah she's like robbie i don't have time for this so i'm like i suppose not to care for the poor who has the time <laughs> who's got the time i mean nice. i suppose not <laughs> and she did the same thing we had okay so i live i have a really nice view of echo park lake i live kind of like in those hilltops whatever and the park was totally inundated with homeless people this past summer mm -hmm. blah 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 and they swept the park and there was a big political debate about it Okay, and now there's no homeless in the park and, and, and the park is beautiful. But regardless, there's all these little staircases, you know, in those areas. There's a one staircase that's not so far from our house that had like a little nook, like a little unattended piece of land that one homeless guy actually built himself quite a nice life. It's not enough that it would be like, you know, like skid row, like, you know, there's not going to be like tents and tents and tents. It fits really one abode and he built kind of a shanty out of wood or whatever it seemed okay and it was very hidden nothing and I started leaving him things he was making like a life for himself or you know it seemed like somebody very down on their luck but not as crazy you know not for me to judge but like I got new sheets and I was I was going through my linen closet I was getting rid of sheets so I washed the sheet I said clean sheets I would leave I ordered boxer shorts to sleep in they were too big on me I said, clean men's boxer shorts. Too big on me. I would leave. And he would take things in. And I kind of just always left things there on the stairs whenever I was taking a walk and I had something. And then one day I was walking past the stairs and I thought, the whole thing is swept up. I said, oh no. You know, and we have no home, you know, and I understand whatever. And she, I go, oh Lord. Uh, uh, I said, did you see the, the guy, um, homeless guy is gone on the stairs near us she said yeah i reported him i'm like what she sends me the report almost gloating and it says Lo uh, lots of noise and drugs going on and i'm like how would you even first of all no noise okay but dr like you clearly made that up she's like well you have to say something or they're not going to take them away mm -hmm. and i'm like you're supposed to be a therapist this is the same couch bitch the same couch bitch <laughs> Okay. Mm. And whenever I'm at her apartment, I'm always looking for accreditation or accreditations or, or degrees. She probably took a two week <laughs> program in Joshua Tree and is now giving life advice, therapy, whatever. God knows. Mm. And this is the person who's reporting the homeless and giving away designer couch uh, and throwing out designer couches in a time like this. Jesus. So I don't like her. No. Yeah. I don't like her either. Could you imagine just, and this guy, I can understand, like, I know there's a lot of politics around, but this guy was genuinely building, keeping his shit together, peaceful, um, going to the, like, he, he the felt like he was trying to get out. Yeah. He felt like he was trying to work towards something and he seemed really, I would just, it was such a nothing. It's not like we had a relationship, but you know, on cold nights or whatever. And I would say, if you have anything extra, you can always put it by the stairs because you know, they come up there. And she reported. 
I'm like floored. That was a strong beef. I mean, it's you a strong have, beef. Mm. It's been building. That was that like incident, a I was willing to let go in a huge trial yeah. of this person's morality. Yeah, and they've yeah. been found guilty of being a shit bag. <laughs> shit bag. Like it's so easy to just throw a couch on a curb, even if you don't want to leave it to the goodwill. Dude, I'm. I swear to God, I'm down on a mission to recover the couch. Like, right? tell her to give us the coordinates. <laughs> yeah, literally. Chad's got a truck. Literally. And we'll bring that couch and we'll find that guy and we'll give the couch to the to the nice homeboy. Like a full birch, <laughs> like handmade from amazing furniture makers. Like, it's just so crazy. You, you did bring a, up a good point too. Where is the dump? Where people, is the dump? People have always said, take it to the dump. Where's the dump? Well, I don't know where the dump it is. It can't be closer than the Goodwill. Is it no. that patch out in the ocean? Is. That, that that's patch? a dump. That That would cost more than the couch. To like helicopter it out there and drop it in. Could you imagine? <laughs> she probably did that. And then our friend comes back. Our friend's gonna I, like, floozy. and she's like, she gave away that couch. I mean, like, I also don't think she knew what kind of damage she was doing to her reputation by getting rid of this couch. But she'll never live this down. It's unimaginable for me to like. I hate throwing things out. And then I thought like, oh, well, I guess unless you grow up poor, you can't have, you know, you don't understand people in need. But it's not true. I know many wealthy who are just, who who can still empathize, acknowledge, the, you know, I know lots of, I'm giving away this Balenciaga sweatshirt. Does anybody want it? It's a total normal <laughs> thing. Or they bring it yeah. to Wasteland or something. I mean, come on. I can't. Yeah. So, so, and she didn't even grow. She She's from like Ohio, somewhere boring, whatever. Yeah. You always bring clothes to the Goodwill. You just do. You don't just throw clothes out. Unless and you they're know like they underwear. throw it away. She just throws things away. What's up? You know they throw it away the goodwill. Yeah. But you let them do it. The you let them do it. You let yeah. them do or it. They, and they throw it away it only. Who resell first of all, they're Star owned by Walmart, I believe. Markup. The goodwill is? No. It's either the goodwill or value village. Wow. Oh, yeah. that's it. That's an interesting like box. Article yeah. Waiting so that's happen. why I give things. I always tell people. I put things literally on bus stops or whatever. And I, I clean everything. And I always write clean t-shirts women's or whatever the things are i just leave them i literally my charity is like i don't even give to non-for-profits because i don't trust them i'll literally if i'm feeling charitable and somebody's in need and i got like a 20 on me or something i'll give them a 20 i'll give a 50 i'll, I'll give that i've stopped donating to gofundmes and weird well gofundmes is different but weird charities that I don't know, and I would rather just give if I have a little extra. That's a big thing. The chair. There's a lot of charities like that that are sketchy. Sketchy. I think for the most, most of them are. Yeah, because there's right? tax. You know, there's tax incentives to be. Yeah. You know, so there's real business element to them now in the way that they're set up. So I Why just, I just, if you're giving away clothes, um, you know, uh, if it's especially basics like sweats, sweatshirts, t-shirts, you can just put it at a bus stop. All right, yeah. Chad, who's your babe of the week? Well, I mean, it's tough to follow that one up, but my babe of the week is buffalo sauce. Bro. Um, <laughs> Wait, this is beef of the week? No, it's babe my babe. So we do babe and legend, and babe and legend are interchangeable. It's just something you're stoked on. It can be a person, place, oh, or thing. Oh, okay, so what is your babe of the week? Buffalo sauce. Oh, buffalo sauce. You like buffalo sauce? I do like buffalo sauce, as a matter it. of fact. That well, orangey barbecue sauce? Yeah, we were in Spokane. I was getting mm. popcorn chicken mm, with buffalo delish. sauce. Just drenching it. I, I I can drench anything in buffalo sauce and enjoy it. I don't love drench because sometimes I get wings in buffalo sauce, mm. but I don't like when they're like slimy, the wings. like but I like to dip. Yeah, I like yeah, to dip. I, I like to the side and I dip. I never like, because you, you get on your hands and stuff. Yeah, what happened to the lemon and pepper dry rub wings? That's good stuff. I haven't they, had that in a while. They doing though. it, but restaurants, if you're listening, no harm in putting on... Going bare with it. The, the, the lemon... You know, pepper, dry rub. Yeah, the meat's good. My babe of the week is uh, Give Me the Loot by Notorious B.I.G. Oh, mm. dude, yeah. I heard it the other day. I mean, it's storytelling. You know, his hits are his hits, but they're pop songs. You know yeah. what I mean? You don't really get the slice of his storytelling ability. Mm -hmm. Dude, Give Me the Loot, he's doing a different voice. He's telling a, a sordid tale worthy of like the best Scorsese gangster movies, not those like boring stories he'll sometimes tell about his buddies that go nowhere and it's just a bunch of, you know meandering thoughts mm -hmm. it's like real hard-hitting shit mm -hmm. and uh yeah give me the loot i, ju I just heard it now. every time i hear it, i'm just so blown away that it's so dude good. that young 24 could, right yeah, yeah it's only 24 it's crazy. yeah and who, i it's don't know how crazy. old he was when he wrote that song but he's so into the details of it and it's just and it's still fun to bop to so i gotta go give me the loot yeah i i really that 
And I think a lot of rappers are returning to it, and I appreciate that. But I really do like personal rap, political rap, people who are talking about the strife, you know, of the people that they come up with, if there's anything. And I felt like it got so bogged down with the cars. And, and this is such an obvious thought, cars and women, you know, and there's room for that, and that's fun, and that's like celebration. But I do miss the Pac, Biggie, you know, and there's a place. There's it. a place for the. I agree. I agree. I agree. Because that's agree, a reflection it, yeah. of what we value. But and I do it's miss also the a celebration, stuff. and you know, but um, but it's it, and I think a lot of rappers. You know, I was really sad to hear that um, Juice World died a couple of years ago because he was to me somebody really. You're so talented. Did you watch that doc? That. I don't know if I saw. Do you guys remember Immortal Technique? Yeah, no. dude, he had that song "Dance with the Devil." Yeah, bro, that shit he, fucked me up. I couldn't he, rock with that. Did he do anything after that? Mm. I mean, he did a song about this dude. It's a long ass story. And in the end, this dude's like reluctant to do this gang initiation where he has to like uh, sexually assault a woman. Ugh. And she's, her head's covered up. And then in the end, he realizes he's assaulting his mother. Ugh. Then he jumps out of a window. Okay, what a video, my God. Yeah, what the fuck? My babe of the that week. That was a huge hit when we were It was. Young People were like, this shit is hard. And <laughs> I, I know, my friends were yeah. like, this is the realest shit I've ever yeah. heard of. Like, I've never heard anything like this All before. these guys from Greenwich, Connecticut, were like, do bar or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing with fucked up shit. People be like, it's so, like the movie Kids. People be like, it's so real. I'm yeah. like, it's not real. It's just awful. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I, that's not Actually, there's a lot of lazy, boring days in between that shit. <laughs> Yeah. what's I, my babe of the week so that's a good thing yeah just a person place or thing you're stoked on person do you get stoked stoked i i don't know that i've used the word stoked i feel like you have um stoked i stoked. i've i've been fine i've been <laughs> thrilled before um my babe of the week <laughs> Probably doing Chicago Zanies for the first time. There's cool. a history there. I love the old, I love a club that's just same location to the end of time and um, kind of that grit, the grime. They had a great letter up there from Ellen asking for a spot. You know, back then for spots, you'd have to be like, dear Zanies, I'm a tour, you know, I'm like, please, you know, I'm here for these dates and if you'll have me, let me know and um and it was just a great time shout out to zany chicago um hope to be back soon did cool. you do did we do south or north when we were there we did whichever one was in like near downtown old old town right old town yeah, yeah. awesome and i got a great they, had, they have such good antique shops in um i love antiquing and uh, a little bit i like vintage things mixed with modern or whatever but i did I managed to go to a few places in Chicago that I really had a good time. And they have this one really weird store in Chicago called Woolly Mammoth that has like the weirdest, creepiest things like old taxidermy and weird like weighing machines from the 1920s and books and whatever. And I ended up getting a, um, it's a little lame, but because it's authentic, I, I'll allow it. I got a buck head. What's that? Which is a deer head, the male deer. Oh yeah, you got yeah. like a taxidermy? No, not yeah. taxidermy. Just like the 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 bow, the uh, the antlers. The antlers, oh, you know, points. to hang up for, I believe. Nice. Okay, and then I was looking it up, and it's like apparently a protective figure and all this stuff. So I feel like, come at me. Mm. <laughs> we got the buck in the house I don't now. Ram dumb yeah. With you. Okay. Is it above yeah, your bed? Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you. No, what. it's small. It's gonna go above, like uh, in this hall. Um, where a clock is now, it's going to go. How oh, cool. Yeah. Um, my baby of the week is this dude who was at our show in Spokane. Um, he asked a question during the Q&A portion where he's like, yo, bros, what's up with perineum sunning? And I was like, what do you mean what's up with it? And then he was like, what's up with it? And I was like, what do you mean what's up with it? And then he couldn't really speak to it, but he was, I think he was trying to embarrass us. Right. Because we're into showing our buttholes to the sun because it's a nutrient boost. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then he ended up coming up. And doing the perineum setting with not bare ass, but we, we threw our legs over our head. But afterwards, he was really shaken up. Like, he was back at his table, and I could see him from the stage, and he, like, had his hand on his head, like, fingers on his temples, and he was just so stressed out. I was like, is you good? And he's like, dude, I feel like I just fucked up my life. Like, I got to go to work on Monday. And I was like, you didn't do anything that bad. You just threw your legs over your head. He's like, 
I'm a teacher, man. Like I can't be doing things like this. And I was like, I don't think you're gonna get fired for like doing a yoga pose. Can't basically, be doing things like this. yeah. And he was real shaking. I agree. I would if you're at the school with this guy, report him. Someone... <laughs> no way, he's open-minded. Yeah, no, he's in the new just the fact that he's at your shit and into whatever. He has no business teaching the youth. But I said this. I said, you know what? To cap it off, come back up here, dude. Let's do it again. And then he came back up. His friends okay, pushed so him to Okay, so he really needs to be fired now. <laughs> well, no, but his friends were encouraging him. Like, he needs to get out of his shell. And he came up, and we held hands on the final rollback as we tossed Chad's beautiful ankles and the rest of our ankles over Dome. And it was a powerful moment. And I think he really, it was cathartic for him. He needs to get out of his shell. He needs to do stuff he's embarrassed by. And he did it. So I'm really proud of him. I have no comment <laughs> on and his asshole. I hope the school is taking notes, and that's all I can hope for at this point. You I know, might bleep out his resp- name. I might bleep out no, his name. No, for the sake of that? the kids, you don't you don't beep out the name. No, we got to clip his no, name. No, because you know what you're thinking about? You're not thinking about the kids in his basement now. You think that's, that's the worst thing thinking. teachers are up to in their off hours? He's up to, I don't even want to know. No, this guy's tight. He's tight, and he doesn't need to be. He's a good guy. Tight? What does tight mean? Like he's not expressing himself. Okay, I thought you meant he's got like a tight ass or something. I'm like, what? What? Well, that too. I don't know what tight means. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, I guess. I don't either. Okay, what's the next question? <laughs> legend of the week, Chad. Who's your legend of the week? Uh, well, I, just got, I just got a new dog today. today oh, wow. So, uh, Lola, she's really cute. She looked really cute. She's really lab? cute. Lab, you gotta go lab. Can we throw guys. up a photo yeah. here, Jamie? Mm-hmm. You she, gotta go lab. And she, yeah, she doesn't bark. She's like really sweet, playful, affectionate. She doesn't bark yet. You have no clue, dude. Yeah, but Puppy, I don't know. That, you I have mean, no they, clue. They, they, the the people like the guy who dropped her off is like, this is my favorite dog I've dropped off. Of course, so, That's what lucky they idiot. Say. He got you good. No, this that. is gonna be the loudest dog in the neighborhood. I guarantee. No way. It. I guarantee <laughs> it. If like... I've ever had a feeling about anything, it's this. I don't know. I'm a lucky idiot, though. I don't know. Jake, you know I'm right, right? You can tell. (laughs) I mean, labs are usually kind of quiet for the most part. Yeah. (laughs) Who's your legend, Louis, Robbie? Wait, so what's the legend? Same thing as Babe. Same thing. Same fucking thing, dude. (laughs) I have one I can't share yet, so I'm not doing that because I don't need to jinx anything here on your podcast. Is it career-based? It's something based. I'll tell you personally. No, I'll tell you personally. I'll tell you personally. Uh, I don't even want clues, okay? Okay, so it's something good again. So many good, good again. things. Okay. Because we do one bad thing, we want to balance it with two good oh things. Oh my God, what's another good thing? I made an amazing stew. I make a great make stew. A good somebody st- said, I, yeah, I love stew. Yeah, mm-hmm. somebody said, oh, you know, where'd you, you know, where'd you get the recipe? I said, on YouTube. I said, YouTube? I said, yeah, what, what's wrong with getting a recipe on YouTube? I saw these guys that I follow their channel. They're kind of nomads and they live, you know, they're able to make their own food and that sort of thing. And I just copied their stew recipe. It's delicious. So it's it's such a basic stew. But I buy everything organic. Carrots, I chop them up. This many. Okay? The mini potatoes, I chop them up. This many. Okay? Full broccoli, I chop them up. About, you know, a real good broccoli, organic. Okay? I get uh, onion, chop up the whole thing. Green onion. This much. Okay? Um... What is it? Parsley or ba- it's parsley. Chop it up. Okay. I, I put uh, cayenne and salt. Like that much, that much. I put them in a bowl together. Then I put beef. Okay. Then I get the oven going. I get the beef in the ground beef with butter. I put the veggies in. I start. I add beef broth simmering. We're doing like an hour, and it's just incredible after. Mm. I love stew. It's incredible. It's a really simple, clean, good stew. That sounds lovely. Did you add any uh, red wine? No. My mom used to make this stew with red wine, and it was so good. It's that sounds really good because there's red meat in it, so I imagine that it would go yeah, like really, bring really out really the well. flavor. Yeah, yeah exactly. Really the red meat and the and the like, and I buy the organic like good red meat. And you're just getting it going with yeah. the onions and with everything. Oh, and garlic, of course. Lovely. Dude, my legend of the week is uh, my Fantasy Football League's uh, championship trophy. (laughs) For those of you who have been following the saga, we were initially going to do DraftKings for the runoff playoff game uh, that we had to concoct after the Hamlin uh, almost tragedy in the Bills game. 
And then we pivoted from that because we felt it was arbitrary. But I know some of the Stokers ended up doing that in their league, and I'm glad it was a helpful solution. And then we were just going to do co-champions with my boy Trevor. Wallace? Um, no, uh, Moylan, but similarly okay. cool. And uh, Shout out to Trevor Wallace. The trophy was in Los <laughs> Angeles, so me and my brother had it for the weekend, and it was my birthday, and we brought it to a pool hall where me and my brother were hanging out and celebrating my B-Day, and we were shooting rounds of pool and Including a new fun game of nine. You have to. Created. You have to say birthday once you be. If you ever become a father, we don't say B day. We'll say birthday. We'll use full language. Did I say B day or birthday? B day. Oh yeah, that isn't. Yeah, you're right. It's my birthday. <laughs> um, what about day of my birth? It's fine. So it was the day of my birth, and I was celebrating <laughs> with my boy, my boy, my brother Chris, and we had the trophy with us, and it felt good. Mm. But then the guys came up with a great solution, although it ended up being to our detriment that the bills were playing the Bengals again, which again, which was a game that got canceled because of the almost tragedy. And they said, you know what guys, we're going to have that be the final solution. And we'll see who gets more points from the players who you guys had in that game. Unfortunately, that game was played today. The Bengals won. T Higgins didn't do much. We lost. So Any me and my brother, on the line or? there's some cash, 1400 bucks to the winner, hundred bucks from each team, 15 guys in the league. Me and my brother, the only ones who co-manage. So the trophy's gone. It's going to Trevor in Denver. Trevor, you had a great team. You deserve it, brother. But here's the thing. Oh. My boy, Greg already ordered the plate that says the winner of the year onto the trophy. And he did it with Trevor and me and my bro's name already on it. So I'm going to plant that motherfucker on there and just cross my name off but it'll always be there and people will remember that we were almost <laughs> champs this season so it's a loss but i'll, I'll never You're forget the dumbest person i've ever met <laughs> and i enjoy it so much Thank and you. i didn't think i could enjoy such a silly dumb person and i really just do and it's actually it's eye-opening for me and i enjoy it it's eye-opening for me because i was judgmental but now i'm like you know what different walks of life maybe you can this is going to be helpful for a lot this of people. This is a grown man yeah. scratching off, <laughs> celebrating his B-Day. I'm like so <laughs> mad, but I'm enjoying, you know? Look, my legend is that five hours I got with the trophy. I'll carry that with me <laughs> for the next five decades. So congrats to Trevor and, and thank you for the kind words, Robbie. Before. No, I, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I meant everything. Chat, what's your quote? So now we do a quote of the week and a phrase of the week for getting after it. Quote of the week. Uh, my quote of the week comes from Lion King. Oh, great. From movie. Mufasa. It's the dad of Simba. Being brave doesn't mean you go looking for trouble. Mm. Well said. Just because I have a golden retriever, so I'm watching Lion King. <laughs> He's so cute. I love The Lion King. What a movie. And it's a very, you know, they don't make kids' movies, I feel like, with, you know, the father dying. You know, I was like... They've softened them. Yeah, they've... It's Hamlet. But that was, like, awesome. Um, my... So what's it called? My quote of the week. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, you know... We typically like them to be inspiring or insightful. Okay, so this... My, my baby sister had a baby, and the baby is to die. Really, really cute. Okay. The problem is my sister sends me and my other three, my other sisters want a big chat. Every update with the baby mm. eating noodles, eating this, eating that. Okay. And I can't be on my, like, I can't be a part of it. Okay. So I sent them this. It's too many texts. Sometimes I'll look over my phone and it's 33 texts and the baby just is standing, even though the baby was also standing yesterday. So I saw this from the Betches Instagram that they posted. Somebody Good tweeted, account. my dad seriously sent this to my family group chat. I'm crying. And this is what the dad sent. And I sent this message to my sisters. Really he wrote, I can't keep up with the pressure of always having to lull or like or heart everyone's random thoughts, picks, and amusements. For all future texts, I love them, laugh at them, or like them. Unless it's bad, then I dislike them. In perpetuity, I can't live with this pressure. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> So I sent that to my whole family. I haven't received a text since. They all just liked it. <laughs> standing. This is me. The baby standing. I send this. Because it's nonstop. The baby. Two pictures of her and her new playpen. And she, okay, she's loving the playpen. But I don't need two of her with the playpen. I sent it yesterday too after getting so many texts. I wonder when they're going to get the message. They'll never get it. They're going to put you on new threads and just keep it coming. So, so you know, boundaries, guys, with the texting. Do they live around here? 
Uh, yeah, I have two sisters here, and my other sister with the baby. She's in Vancouver. Uh, yeah, my sister lives in Iowa, so I love those pictures. Not but totally. you get them every twenty four seven. Yeah, that's. This is all day. Much. Yeah. So don't put me on the on record that I don't love them. <laughs> okay. I did, that message that the dad sent. I feel exact. I love all of them. <laughs> yeah. I cannot feel the pressure to respond and be involved in the dialogue daily, daily. Right. That's all. I hear you. My quote of the week is uh, from a Matthew McConaughey Instagram post. He's quoting his son, and he asked his son what he was psyched about for his uh, departure to summer camp. And his son said, well, I guess I just want to, you know, meet new people and do cool things. And uh, I like summer that Summer camp? Yeah. It's January. Right. <laughs> What's he, where's this camp? Bro, I didn't even pick that up. <laughs> southern Bro, hemisphere that was whoosh um also borderline legend of the week mcconaughey because he did the video while yard work was going on that takes massive oh that's right there was like a weed whacker just blasting and mcconaughey was like fuck it i feel inspired we're filming now i loved him in dallas buyers club yeah that was like his fourth best performance of that era that was for sure. such a good movie that was I, such a good movie i didn't like it that much well, yeah, homophobic as usual. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bro, get out with that. Well, let me guess. AIDS didn't happen. <laughs> okay. What's let me AIDS? guess. Let me guess. Did you watch How to Survive a Plague, that documentary about all no. the uh, brave activists who got the AIDS drugs pushed through when the government Oh, wasn't was that attention? what it was called? Because I did about ACT UP and everything? Mm -hmm. Yes, because Montreal had a connection to that too. Dude, the opening scene, me and my brother are stoned out of the bejesus. We're not homophobic. We want to watch it get enlightened. Or we are homophobic, but we want to get enlightened and no longer be homophobic. So we're, we're honest about where we're at and honest about wanting yeah. to get better. We throw it on, stone, stone, stone. First scene is a guy just dying in the hospital. Three minutes, we're like off, dude. Later, put on some anime. But I watched it later when I was sober. If you didn't think you were gay watching that, the anime certainly solidified that. Dude, <laughs> the, only thing gayer, Bender, dude. the only thing gayer than the AIDS movie you tried to watch is the anime you turned on after. <laughs> There's no question. Dude, that was a heavy moment. We turned it on and we were just like, whoa, this is intense. Good good movie, though. Good movie. Um, Chad, what's your phrase of the week for getting after it? Uh, my phrase of the week for getting after it is, let's put it in the stew. What's that? Let's put it in the stew. Let's put it in the stew. I'm, I'm, I'm still okay, thinking so about that Okay, so you make stew. up a phrase from the podcast? Uh, uh, Chad does that often. Yeah. but Which I is inspired, but you don't have to. Well, I already did. I think Lucky Idiots. There we go. Lucky That's a great idiots. phrase for getting after it. Nice. Mic drop. Mine is a Mark Marin quoting Ernst Becker from his book, The Denial of Death. We create the reality we need in order to discover ourselves. I got a phrase <laughs> of the week for getting after Everyone it. Everyone grieves their own way. Hit the top left of the clip. Uh, that goes no. out to all the stokers. Hit the top left. Dude, Hit the top left. I thought we forgot go about that whole strong. section. Slow of and the pod. steady. Slow and steady, fellas. Yeah. Slow and steady it. than fist, right? Yeah. Well, you're you're trying to get relaxed. If you do want to squirt, some I know dudes some are gonna fuck like, this. We're, these, it's a like college kids who listen. They're yeah, gonna be okay, out so there. They're gonna be better Girls trained. Girls are gonna it be in the time. ICU. Like this is we gotta okay, warn these so guys. Go slow. Not everybody's taking a fist. Keep in mind, I don't have a penis. We're doing what we can. She's okay? got a black belt in this shit, so, all right? We got you know, white belts. I'm really Let's go figuring slow. It out. Yeah. Listen, okay, you baby don't have cobras. To be thing, but if a girl wants Monitor to the venom, try and come that way, that's your best bet. Are, you got to be scared, bro. There, it was, great power comes great responsibility. There's some young buckaroos out there who are eager to do damage in a positive way. Squirt, uh, I, I hold damage. no liability. I don't check my DMs. I don't care. I, you can message me till you're blue in the face. Jake, put Robbie's phone okay. number right here. <laughs> my phone so number. for follow up I don't text. pick up the phone and that's that. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, thank you for everything you contributed. It was a true pleasure. You're, you're really one of my favorite comedians. So it was an absolute delight to have you're you. You're one on. of my favorite idiots. <laughs> and you've opened the door for so many others after you. I'm excited who I'm going to meet. <laughs> I want, you know, because these are the, also the kinds of guys that come with pools and motorcycles and fun toys. Mm -hmm. So I think it'll open a whole new... You think you, know. you can handle a 125? No, I can't handle anything, but I just want to be around. I, I'd go on like, you know, a go-kart or a, you know... How many CCs are we talking? I, I don't know what any of that is. You got to get into the granular stuff. Here, no, right? I'm not getting into it, but yeah. I'm right. Like Did guns? we do it? No. No. Right. I do a BB gun. That's fun. That's fun. I'd love to do that. And you know what? I went paintballing once, but um, I should go paintball. I was very good at capture the flag. We're big paintballers. Oh, I'd go I paintballing. paintballing. I'd go paintballing. That's so much fun. So much fun. Fucking work, you dude. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, I got like the strategy of like 
And it's really my side fighter. Why don't you stick to the clits and I'll stick to the paintball clits. Okay, okay. Yeah, because <laughs> you can't stick to the clits. Why don't you stick to your dick and I'll stick to the clits. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we did it. Yeah, right? we did we it. Did what we Thanks we for did what on. we could. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. If you need advice, these guys. Are